And I would like hello to say good evening, good, good afternoon. Hello, everybody, for joining us again on this meeting. I'm very, very excited to have this another episode of uh, This is How We Do It, a meeting that with uh, members from national federations that will talk about how they have referee development and, uh, and uh, education in their federations done, how the, 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 the referee uh, core is built and all the information that we would like to listen from them. Thank you again all for joining. You are all very great. Uh, thank you for all your support and help. This, this time of, and the, these meetings have been amazing for me. It's such an amazing experience. I think this, uh, I'm talking about myself and I think that I'm talking for everybody. This, all this information that we receive is very, very helpful and very great. And uh, I love you, the, the support that you give me and I love the, the, the feedback and everything. So thank you again. This is, this is my, my salary for doing this, this work all the smiles and everything and all the thumbs up that I received from everybody. So thank you again. Um, please, if you didn't subscribe yet to our YouTube channel, the, the World of Volleyball Referee, there we can have all the meetings, uh, we have all the information, all the uh, recordings that you can see. Stay updated for uh, some uh, video clips of special cases and special uh, things that we, we upload any time and again. And don't forget when you see this uh, video on the YouTube to destroy that like button, uh, those likes, like I said, gives us the, the salary and, and the good feeling in my heart that we're doing a good job. So without further ado, I would like to um, start this meeting with Avelino coming from Portugal. He's gonna talk about his education and referee corps. Avelino, it's all you. Okay, Roy, yeah. uh, thank you. Uh, can I share the, yes? Yes, the yes, please. Yes, okay, thank you. So I, I will start. Okay, good. Okay, sorry. I started in the middle of the presentation. No problem. Okay, yeah, this is that. Yeah. Good. So, um, Roy, thank you for once again for the invitation. Uh, hi, everybody. I hope everybody is healthy. Uh, this is one one goal, one main goal nowadays, with this uh, terrible pandemic. Um, and uh, my special greetings, not obviously, to my other two partners who will be here on this presentation. Patty, nice to hear hear and see you. Good memories also, um, and um, also I. That's why I put this picture of. Of, of the dinosaurs of the Atlanta Olympic Games. <laughs> and also to Anderson Casador, also my good friend, which, which, which both of them I referee together, whether beach, whether, whether volleyball. So um, my uh, goal in this presentation is to try to uh, present to you and to show you what we are doing nowadays in Portugal, how we developed in the last years this referee and education and, and development program and um, this is for us has been a, a, a important goal for the developing not only of refereeing but also of volleyball and beach volleyball in portugal i think also that this the developing of refereeing um, helps to the national federation to obtain the goal of development so we're, what would i like to show you first First, to understand what is Portugal, where, where we are, I think you all know, uh, not only for the uh, wine, for, for Cristiano Ronaldo or other uh, sports fans, but also to understand the geographical uh, zone. And this zone brings us uh, some, also some problems for the development of, of the volleyball and all of the refereeing. So uh, Portugal, uh, as, as, you may, as you for sure know, is, is a country uh, uh, at the southeast of Europe. Uh, Lisbon capital, Euro language Portuguese, and some landmarks. Uh, we have about 10 million uh, people. But Portugal is not only uh, mainland. We have islands uh, where we have strong volleyball. And this keeps us an idea also that we, from very uh, long time, the communication between, especially with mainland and the islands, is um, very, very important. Also to know um, that um, Portugal is, is um, a 
country with uh, over 800 kilometers of coast. And this means also that uh, beach volleyball is also very popular uh, uh, all around, um, all around the, the, the coast. And is one that's why it's also a successful sport, and also that's why we have uh, uh, for a long time this um, uh, this other volleyball uh, uh, in our um, country. So, um, but let's go to the to the to the volleyball okay. world to understand and for you to understand what is a, a volleyball country uh, of Portugal. Uh, I just put here some numbers, some figures, so that you know that we. Uh, uh, have about uh, a little over 50,000 uh, players in the 1920 um, uh, season, about uh, almost 1,000 clubs. Um, uh, associations, Portugal is divided in 20 regions and in 17 we have regional associations that take care of the, of the, of the clubs and of the trainers and of the coaches and also of the refs as you will see. And we have about uh, 5,000 coaches and about uh, a little over 3,284 um, at, at, at 1920 season uh, referees. Uh, this is a, a, a number which, if, which, which you can you can see uh, for for the development of the of the country is important. Obviously, uh, the number of athletes. But this means that um, the 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 improvement of the of the sport only happens if you have a, a good number of athletes, and especially if you have, like it, it's shown here on on the on the figure, if you have over 30 and 34, so over 66 percent of the of the volleyball players which are young players. So this means that the the pyramid, as as it called here, is. Um, we have 40 for 9,000 people, uh, players, men and women, until until the junior age, and this is only the top. Which this is okay and means that the future is of volleyball is guaranteed. Um, only for you to know, women, women uh, players and men players. So we, so we have more women players, 54.9, and uh, against 45.1, and this is a tendency which is increasing. But what, what we want to speak here is more about um, volleyball. In the volleyball uh, refereeing numbers and the evolution, I show you here in the last uh, 12 years, the evolution of the number of uh, referees in uh, volleyball total, total, and is, is a number that is increasing always very, very slowly, I think too slowly for what, for what we want. And we have nowadays more and much more games and we don't have enough referees to have for example i don't i don't speak about the first league or second league but about the other leagues that we can have always two referees available for each match and this is uh, something that also uh, let us gives us a problem that when we want to uh, to have experienced referees as second referee they don't have the, the experience during their initial years. And this is something that uh, we always try to, to, to focus on our um, development programs and, uh, and our, our subjects that we develop, our methods that we develop during these programs. Uh, the other problem is that obviously we have 300, 2,084 volleyball referees, but only 400 of them, 456, working nationally on a weekly basis. So this is, because this is the question of availability, obviously, and uh, that um, shows us. And uh, also we have only, uh, from this, we have 53 national volleyball uh, referees level, or national level, and 31 in beach volleyball. So um, this is the numbers that we work. This is the numbers that the National Federation works with specifically, but also gives instructions to the other, to the other level of, um, uh, reference development programs. How is it? How is it a career in in in, a, in volleyball in national level in, in in Portugal? We have three levels. The level one is a local level, and the responsibility of this uh, development is by each association, which has a refereeing um, uh, commission, and uh, there they um, make 
the first they, they, they are responsible for the first steps of the the reprise which are made uh, from people who are over 16 as it's told here but especially with uh, partnerships between clubs and schools uh, many of the of the young people come from clubs and schools and nowadays also with our uh, supervision when i mean our i mean national referee commission supervision we try that the schools uh, sports the, of volleyball brings more and more referees for the for the uh, federation for the sport level so that it, it's important that this way of making the education in refereeing comes out from this uh, uh, level one after we have level two which is a regional level by regional i mean oh, it's always the regional um, uh, refereeing association commission that makes this uh, this uh, always responsible for this um, um level of uh, development but uh, you you can have two or three regions that make together to make a course of level two level two is volleyball but also uh, and i put it in brown so do you understand the difference uh, that's where also we start the level uh, from the first level from beach volleyball which we call also b uh, level two why because we think that um, uh, on our development program that everybody must get through the volleyball where do you get the first um, um, education the first uh, developments of how you how you wrap it the signals and so on and so on and then after you can make a specialization which i i, I clearly uh, let you know that uh, people uh, the, the the referees here can be whether one or two or both they can they rep because it's we have uh, portugal uh, it has a seasonable uh, beach volleyball is a seasonable sport this means that we, we we play volleyball from September to May, and then we play from June to August, September. We play beach volleyball, so it's possible that uh, if someone wants to do both, no no problem with this. After we have the level three, which is the national level, which is um, uh, the responsibility is from the national referring commission specific. So we make uh, we are responsible for these these courses. Uh, people can go one more uh, more than three years in level two and uh, we have a, a strong partnership with refereeing associations why because uh, the the proposal for the candidate for the candidates to work with us are uh, close to work are proposed by the regional associations uh, refereeing commissions and then we make we, we 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 discuss with them to make the 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 decision so whoever can can do the course after at the national level which is level three we have uh, uh, nowadays uh, 51 referees which from them six are international we have uh, 11 women uh, that are um, uh, at national level one of them is international and in beach volleyball we have 33 uh, national volleyball uh, beach volleyball uh, referees for and for our international and uh, two of them are seven women in all together but two of them international um preference we have groups only in volleyball three groups uh, of uh, referees of these 51 according to to their performance and the supervision of of this of this uh, 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 performance is uh, from the responsibility from the national uh, refereeing uh, commission so how how we change in the last years the way of our refereeing from 2000 I, i'm president of the portugal national um, refereeing commission since 2016 and then we made a plan the first four-year plan and then the implementation that is made nowadays and i think um, uh, this is just a feedback for you this this was very important for us to achieve our goals um and we started uh, we, with something which was for us obviously but we had some difficulties some financial difficulties especially from our federation to to the yearly presential clinics in tournaments so uh, every year before we start uh, the, the the competition we make we make uh, um, uh, a presential clinic not usually two days i will speak about this uh, after and uh, uh, we started also uh, with this we started with a middle season online meeting as, as I said to you, we are uh, from all over the country, 
and also from the islands. And sometimes the, the problem of the communication was there. And we, 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 we had the, the, the moment, um, we had to find the moment to make uh, always a feedback to what is going on, what ha had to be changed. And at least we started in this period with a middle uh, online uh, season meeting. Also, uh, we started to work also with the, with the national referees. We made a clinic with them, a yearly clinic with them, where we speak about, about uh, many matters, not only about their career outside, but also what they can, they can do inside for the development of the uh, refereeing um, in, in, in our country. But for me, the, the main goal and what we achieved was this, this close relationship we got with our national uh, federation. And at the end, you will understand why this was so important, because I will show you some examples of what we are doing nowadays that uh, was a result of this close relationship, of this close interactive, um, what we need, can you give us what, what you want to do, what, what, can, what is important for, for the Federation, but what is important also simultaneously for the referee, for the referees to know, so that uh, we can prove, so that we can improve in our in our way of referee. So the formatic, obviously, uh, evolution uh, in referees methods was was important. We 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 had we were, we had to update all our documents, rules, guidelines, casebook, and so on. Also in Portuguese because we had most of them in Portuguese and and, and in, in English. So nowadays we have, we have them all in Portuguese. Why? Because we think also that not only the referees need to know this, but also uh, the, the the players, the coaches, so which which we we already have here some some interesting interesting um, um, webinars with, with uh, about coaches. Everybody should know about this, should know about the rules, should know about the guidelines. And uh, I don't say the case book because, but but uh, about this matter so that the interpretation uh, is uh, can or for, from these documents or from these cases can be only one. Also, another another improvement was the e score sheet. So we have e score sheet now in all um, in all uh, games of the first league, of the second league, of the third league, and junior. And we are starting. So it it went on uh, step by step, and we are starting with this. Um, also, with with the, the young the young one, young ones um, in the next year, we should have started this year, but because of the pandemic, we only have now uh, play, playing the first and the second league in uh, volleyball. And the other thing that was very important for us is uh, because many people, as you can imagine, told us oh, a story about this game and so on, is to have a video of all first league games men and women this was very important for us with something that we wanted at, at the first moment we we, we could have uh, have these videos shared because the coaches shared it be, between the, themselves uh, the the all the games but the angle of of the coaches as you know behind the, the serving area was not very good and one of the main improvements that made was made by the by the national federation is that we have in all courts one camera, which is which is uh, on on the upper side of, of the of the net, where we can have a, a, a perfect view of the whole court, and where we can see most obviously not not very not as as, as well uh, as 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 a TV match, but as we can see most of the of the of the cases that happen, and I will show you after uh, how this happens, and. Uh, we have also, uh, besides that, we have uh, 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 clubs, clubs, um, national TV um, per per weekend, and we have uh, at least three, four matches every weekend, so that also we can use this if we want to show uh, some cases, to show some procedure to the uh, to all to all the to all the to all the to all the. To all the Obviously, this was this change would not be possible without the support of international referees. This is very good that we are the group uh, that we are working. With. Obviously, we must work with the referees because uh, I, I was a referee until 2015, and now I'm out. But we need to know what is going on to, un to understand 
how, we, uh, how are the procedures so that we can adapt the reality or the, the, the international procedures to our reality. And this only can, can uh, be given with the, the, the support of the international referees, which they are, they are very good in this. Every time an international Portuguese referee goes to a competition, uh, it must, he must make a report to us about the new things. And, and sometimes, even if it's possible, they are, they are uh, uh, available for us. I will show you after an, an example to give us a feedback uh, in, in the moment of this. The involvement of the international request was fundamental for this uh, change. Also, the sport faculties, especially in the other areas which are not uh, completely related with, uh, with volleyball, but are important for the performance of, of, of volleyball. I mean, uh, the psychological side, the sociological part, and the ped pedagogical, pedagogical part. And then another work that we made also here in Portugal, with the, we have a uh, referees association, and we work with them, uh, so in some cases with the coaches also association, we work with them, and this helps us also to give us some feedback on what, what was important, especially in some cases, not only in first league, but especially for the development of the young uh, players, which kind of a criteria should, could be better or should be better for them to, to, to develop. Also, we make some adapt, uh, uh, adapt to some situations because of COVID. For example, when we started with, uh, uh, with the COVID in March of last year, we had to interrupt our, our monthly um, um, uh, Zoom meetings, but immediately we start another, 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 uh, another way of connecting and, and hearing things new about what happened. We started, uh, for example, with international invitation, which is very easy to have someone from uh, all, all over the world to, like, like in this case, we are here to speak we had a, a, a very good series of eight um, uh, events a whistle with. We started with, with Zorica and, and ended with, with, um, with Sandy Steele. It was fantastic, but we had uh, uh, referees from uh, uh, speaking English, but not only because we had our, our, our Brazilian friends also, which were very important. We had Paulo Turski here from, from, from Brazil. We had uh, El Zir Oliveira from Beach. So, uh, all people that were at the uh, to, uh, that are nominated for the Olympic Games of Tokyo, there were eight people. So this was very good. Also, we we, we gave some reference to our referees to look and hear some seminars from other sports. You always can learn something from other sports, and we also used uh, the, this very important tool that we already spoke about, which is the case book, uh, the FIDD multimedia uh, teaching material with all the cases and so on. And we use it this also during some of these, um, the, these seminars. Always with the goal, the main goal was to find common solutions to get the best performance for, for, for the referees, whether you are on the beginner's level, whether you are on, on, the, on, the, on the top level. And I think also this helped the development of, 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 of our referees uh, um, throughout, because uh, when, when uh, I entered, uh, the, or when our commission entered the, the Portuguese Federation, we had three, uh, we had the international and one or two more referees. And now with the level of the referees improved a lot. And we, we think that this came out also because of this refer referee and, 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 uh, and the development plan. How we do it now for a, on a yearly basis? So just, just to be clear, we do, we do a yearly processional clinic in tournaments. Uh, we do um, a monthly online meeting and inter, uh, international uh, referees uh, clinic. So a yearly uh, presential uh, clinic in tournaments is usually is a two days clinic with some theoretical and some practical subjects. Uh, with, with, uh, when I speak of practical, I speak of refereeing uh, game tournaments. And obviously this is very good to reinforce the refereeing group uh, in the last, uh, we have, have done this in the, in the last years. The last uh, year was not possible due, due, due to COVID, but at least we started with one small group because there was a tournament uh, that, that started the season for the, for the first year. We make with this group a presential clinic and all the others we, we made it online, which was very good to give some feedbacks and also to make the, 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 the starting of all, of, of all um, documents. 
as you can understand when we start with COVID, especially for example, the question was the protocol, what changed? We changed the protocol a lot based, based on uh, um, FIDB and uh, CV uh, tournaments. We, we, we do, and we applied this in this two-day clinic. And the, what we saw from the first day to the last day that we improved some small details. We agreed all in these small details and the, all these small details helped to make the game or to, to, that people could feel that the game was safer because of the conditions of the players of using the mask, when, when the referees had the mask, when they must take out the mask, what cleaning procedures should be made, etc, etc, etc. And even in these two days clinic, I still remember of, of this last year, we had, we had uh, one of our referees, uh, Raquel Portela, who was outside in the, in, the, in, the, in the first international tournament that was uh, played. And she entered also and she gave us also some feedback and helped us to get this. This, why I, this is why I think that um, it's important always to have this uh, uh, feedback from the international referees so that we can ha have a final decision about the decisions that we have to take for, for the season. And nowadays, what we have is a monthly online meeting. So it's, it's, it's just a two hours meeting clinic with some theoretical and practical subjects with, with one line observation of a game. And also, this also giving a reinforcement of the refereeing group. Um, I, I will show you after very, very quickly how, how we do it. Um, and, and this is very good because uh, the, uh, all, we are all uh, far away, but we are all together always one time a month and we speak about the, the questions that happen and we make some goals for the next weeks and we sh we see some of the, one match and we show the, the the details from what we have which are our main goals for this so that people understand that the, the procedures can be more uni unified and um, also international referees clinic so that the 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 that that we do uh, with it's a two hours clinic with a, the, the for for point system and so it, it's also uh, it's, it's also the, the same way so that, that, that it happens in beach volleyball how, what we do yearly we we for the daily we just we have one day presential clinic with the theoretical and practical session theoretical in the morning practical in the in the afternoon and we are very lucky because uh, the FIVB referee commission is Jose Casanova, and he has, has been in the last uh, six years. He has been in all of these uh, um, all of these clinics, and which is very good for us um, for 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 the development of our of our beach volleyball uh, season. So, um, just for you to know, why why I say to you that it's very important uh, this this kind of of of, of uh, uh, presentation. This is the website portuguese website and this is something where we can we can do everything that we have worked during these last last four years is put in this in this in this um in this website i will open it i hope you can you can see it um the website can you see it uh, the website now i hope yes okay no, you, you have to make a new share. You... A new share, okay, good. That is what, that's what I thought. Because sometimes I, I share the, the screen, but sometimes it doesn't go, okay. It goes again. Yeah, thank you. Good. Now, yes, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's okay. okay. Good. Okay, what we have here is what the, the, that everybody can see and everybody can see when they want. So here we have the live stream of all first league matches. If you click and shows you all matches. For example, today we have a live match today. You just click it on it and you can see uh, the live match from, 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 from one, one camera, which, which is, okay, this is the, the, the game which is starting now, uh, the game between the, if I wasn't, wasn't here, I would be seeing this match because um, this is a game between first and second uh, of, of, the, of, of the league in Azores, in, in, in league. So you have here all the information. And if you want to see the match, you have the live stream. This is, this is uh, really live. So you can, this is the live stream of the match. So the match should be starting because it's starting now at this time. Our time is 8.30, so it's starting. And you, you can see the match. 
here is one of the uh, one of the one of the uh, holes which we cannot have a, vi an, a vision uh, from from the back of the first referee. But I will show you after another one. So we can see here, and we can see all the all the questions here uh, regarding the protocol. Okay, uh, regarding everything, and we, and I can see this this um, this match. I can see this match uh, whenever whenever I want. Also, it's important for you to 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 see and to understand. I hope I will try to 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 show you uh, another match so that all matches that are here, and I show you now the the screen. All matches before are to be seen here when I want what uh, and with several data, so I can have all the that interesting because this is something that interesting also to the to the to the um, to the journalists so you can have something about the, the teams about the match about the play by play but especially about the match it's important for us you can have immediately after when the match is finished you immediately have the score sheets okay so you can you can see the, the score sheets what happens what happened in the match okay you can see uh, if, if everything is okay by, by the skin. You can see also here the, the sanctions, which is always very interesting because if I want to see something, a sanction that was shown, I can easily go, go up, go up and see the video of the match. And uh, I go up and this opens and you see the, the match immediately here. You can see the match and you can go to any part of the match to see uh, where, 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 uh, where some where where something happens. So in any in, in, in any case, you can see by by this you can you can watch and see uh, any any of the of the positions, any of the work which is done. And we if, if we have that doubts about something, it's very good that we have always the, the 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 full idea of the match. I think this is important when when we see some cases because analysis of cases is good, but you, we should always make the analysis of the cases uh, in a complete way. I mean, seeing a whole match or seeing a whole sequence because something, sometimes some things happens, happen before, before of this. So you can so you see this. And this is what we, we use, this tool we use. We say everybody, every referee can see any match, whether his match, whether the other matches of, 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 of his, um, of his uh, um, uh, partner, you can see you can see it any any way, any any time he wants. I will share you again the the, the 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 presentation. Okay, okay, good. Yes, you can see it anywhere and when you want. And this is very good uh, for for you because you can see a ma your match uh, immediately when you arrive at home because it's downloaded there. You know all all the data. You can see it immediately. And also that we can also use this data so to make these online meetings so that we, we always choose one match to see some, some specific things that we, we, we want to see. And this was especially also good for us because we are used to see only the, used to see, I mean, we are as members to see the, 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 the matches which happens in our area. And now we can see matches in Azores, Madeira, Lisbon, for example, for me, for, which I'm from Porto, we can see all these, all these, all these, uh, all these matters. So uh, this is very important for the development of 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 our of our um, sorry of our um, work here here in here in the here in the sorry here in the in Portugal. I I I, I won't read you for this. These are uh, in, in a general base our documents for the priorities of the referee education and development plan, everything that, that we work. I, I also uh, ask, uh, ask you this for the last point here. We, we work also here together with some national sport plans like sport and ethics and fair play. Some uh, work we make already with the referees about integrity in sports, bets on sports. This is also a subject that is also important and people and referees should be aware of this, uh, aware of this and to understand so that if they find something strange is happening, they can understand. And also we have a one, one national, international um, plan, which is the white card in referring with the fair play, which is a, a card besides the, the yellow and the red, 
that um, gives a, not in this case not, not a penalty, but when you, you have something that helps you when a referee when a, a ref to helps a referee decision uh, that, that you can give to a team or to a player like this. So this is uh, my presentation. Uh, I would like also to 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 tell you that this is not my work. This is a national referee team, as I call them, work. Some of you, maybe you know them. Cesario Rama is an old international uh, referee. Marcelino Davas, national referee. Uh, Paulo Felix is a, a, a national referee with a lot, lot of experience and uh, from, from Lisbon. Margarida Pires is from Açores, is a, a, a technical for, for, for developing educational plans. And this is a team, the Portugal National Refereeing Commission team that we make the, the, the development of the referees in, in Portugal. So thank you once again. And uh, especially for you, Roy, I, I, I make here a special photo because this was, as you know, I'm a FIB instructor and this was one of my best uh, uh, performance because of the team that was there, there present. And it was in, you know, where it, this is eh? in, in, in Israel. Okay, so Roy, thank you, thank you very much, and thank you all, all for your attention. Thank you, Avelino. It was really, really interesting, very thorough, with uh, a lot, a lot of information, and very professionally done. Um, if anybody has some questions before we pass on uh, that you would like to ask Avelino, you can unmute yourself now, or if you would like something to add. Uh, Avelino, I have a couple of questions that I wrote myself during the presentation. Uh, the e-score sheet that you were talking about, how did it start? How did you implement the e-score sheet into your, uh, to your federation, into your uh, competitions? Uh, how, was, how was it accepted by the, by the, by the teams themselves? Uh, who, the scores are from the teams or by your, the referees themselves? Because... Sometimes, you know, the teams have to yeah, you put, scores. You put the, right, the right points. <laughs> so we start, we start, okay, first, first of thing, it was important to have the e-score sheet system. We, we explained to why this was important to the Federation and they agreed with this. The other, the other thing was, okay, but uh, who is responsible for, 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 for this? Computers and so on, how, how we can work this and, 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 how, and who can make this? And uh, the, the next step was uh, to get the computers, okay? The Federation got the computers and offered the computers to each, to each club, okay? Uh, but uh, telling them, okay, you must, but you can only use this on, 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 for, for, for volleyball. So that everybody, because in the first year, the, the updates and so on, you can imagine how it was. So <laughs> the, 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 the first year was a, a difficult, difficult year because we did not start, it did it, it connections and so on. So, so we, 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 the clubs had to have obviously not Wi-Fi, but cable connection for, for internet first. The second, the second thing was they, they, they had to make, the update was make on the day before always, because also the update of the, the player's inscription. So the place that could play was made uh, three, is made three days before uh, of, 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 the, of the game. So it's, it's like that. They can it can be updated and and only these players that are there can be can play there mm -hmm. if there is some, if there are some other things but these are just details and where we we lost the war if I can say so is that everybody when we had uh, referees that made the, the East Coast sheets and the federation uh, said we have we have we have, don't have enough referees we cannot lose them not re having them uh, making a score sheet and not refereeing other matches. So they made, when we made also with them, um, some uh, programs, some development uh, program, educational program, how, how we work. And they have young people, especially young, it's, it's very easy uh, uh, to make this. And now they are more, more, more than experts in doing this. Obviously, if there is a problem, it's the referee that must do. And obviously, because of this, we had to make also with the referees, we make first a national uh, East Coast sheet um, uh, um, educational program so we make some, some some and nowadays we have any national referee can make this this uh, east coast sheet okay obviously we have some of them we are more specialized or mm -hmm. the best ones for international matches and so on but everybody knows if there is a problem 
how they can handle. And if there is a problem in the mesh and they cannot handle, they know that they can, can, can contact someone that can help them uh, resolve in this situation. Okay. Um, another question is, what is the involvement of the senior retired referees? Once they retire and everything, do they stay involved and do they have special uh, jobs to do? Yeah, not the one that we want. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> not the one they want. This is because we are we, we one one of the details uh, that he, here we, we show is that we we want to have a, a evaluation team from from especially from all the referees. But this we this is there is no at this moment there is no financial support neither neither for this because we we do we do it step by step. Mm -hmm. So um, the priorities were not this, but we want this as soon as we can. We will do this. Because uh, the evaluation which are made now are made only by the national by the referee commission members. N nobody else make this because we could do, but then uh, we could ask them. But then the, the criteria and and and, and, the, and the, 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 the the evaluation would not be the same. So we do it. We assume it, and as soon as we can, we will have some group of of, of referees, of especially of old referees, because we have really some, some group of old referees and even some old players who are very good at this that can, can make them, that can start and make uh, the, the evaluation of, of, of the referees. But let me tell you that uh, with, with all the referees, with all the games online, uh, we, can, we can have a very, a very good idea of what, what is going on nowadays in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the refereeing volleyball, especially in the first week. Yeah, yeah. This is this is a great tool uh, to have the, the the matches online and to have them recorded, and then you can access it whenever you want. This is this is a great uh, a great achievement. Obviously, only one camera, but uh, yeah, it's it, better than nothing. Still, you can see yeah. and have. Yeah, it's really nice. And my my last question is that uh, who who are the one who are in charge of the education material? Because you have a lot of seminars, you have a lot of meeting, a monthly online meeting. You have several meetings a year for all kind of levels and everything. So who's in charge of gathering all the information, all the, the education material himself? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, 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 have, I make the leadership of, of a group, obviously, that, that, that work with him. Let, let me tell you, we, we, we work with many, many partners together, okay? I think, I think many of, for example, when we want to speak about some technical thing, technical matter, I use the international referees who are the, the, the experts. Obviously, there, is, there are some situations with, with which we, we don't work exactly as international ones. For example, let me, let me give you something with, which is, we are in the, in the referee group, so, so you know this. Well, nowadays, we, it's given the instruction that you should not give a red card after the 20 points. Okay, good. So it's, 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 yeah, you understand. So um, this is more what, what the instructor is giving. Here in Portugal, we say, no, this is, this is not, this doesn't work uh, for us. We, if you have to give a red card at 22, 23, uh, 24, not obviously if it's finishing the, 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 the set, or, but you should do it. Okay. So uh, we, we, we make this ad ad adaption, but the technical parts, Everybody, we, we always use the, the international reference. And this tool help us, it's very good because, um, as I told you, Raquel was in the, in, the, in the competition and we had the meeting and she was online. Vitor Gonçalves was in the European Championship and Ricardo also, and they entered online. They, they were, we made a, a, a schedule where they could enter online between uh, in the morning uh, after the meeting and so on. So we can have, this is important because we can have the, the last tendencies and we can make the interpretation. And also the referees that go outside and are in these tournaments. For example, Ricardo is now, Ferreira is now in Nantes in, in a women's uh, tournament. So uh, I know that when he arrives, he will let us know. And this will give us some feedbacks. And it, especially this feedback is a written feedback, which is shared immediately by all international, which is the most important. Obviously they should know. And that, after we, we speak a little about this, if necessary, if necessary, we speak about little, on these online meetings. And the, the temas that we, we speak about this, is, it, this is going more, more and more about what we see in the matches. So about the feedbacks, these online meetings. The other ones, the great meetings, we prepare them also uh, with the, the faculties, as I told you, the sport faculties, we think of some specialists to speak with us about this. 
but this is something which is complementary. This is not the main thing for for rating. I think it's important to speak. For example, I I've, I have master master studies in sports psychology. Okay, but I I, I don't think master um, uh, sports psychology is the is the main the main uh, area for for referees. It's a complementary area. The main referee area are the the, the technical masters are the, the the interpretation of the rules are the way you are you work and so this this is for me it's what's important and this is the focus that we make on on these online meetings uh, where where we where we share and obviously where we are where usually we are about uh, 50 people uh, every month together and i think it's also good to to speak about the spirit of the group first but also to speak about the 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 that everybody does the same way uh, when, when we are far away, we cannot control. And this is a more way, a better way to control this, this kind of things. Great. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else with a question? Cool. Okay. So again, thank you very much, Avelino. Uh, we'll stay tuned. Maybe we'll have some more questions at the end. No, I stay because I want to hear the uh, Of course. <laughs> and uh, I want to say hello to Anderson. Understand now, Brazil. can can you hear me now? Now we can hear you perfectly. Hi, finally. <laughs> <laughs> so, Anderson, it, it's all yours. Thank you very much, and you you can talk again too. Okay, and first of all, I ask you some sorry about certain problems in the in the computer and the sound. Now I. I have the computer and iPad at the same time. It has two cameras. I don't know where I can, I, I, I need to see, okay? I try to share my... Okay? Perfect, perfect. Okay. Guys, I'm Anderson Casado. I'm from Brazil and uh, on behalf of the Brazilian Volleyball Confederation and Cobrave Brazilian Referee Commission and to talk about the volleyball referees education and development in Brazil. And uh, the first one, the, the Cobrave organization, Cobrave and Brazilian Referee Commission, is important to, to show for you. Brazil is, uh, I know, I, I think everybody knows, Brazil is a huge country like the US and the many countries. And here you have Brazil dividing five regions. And the region in, in green here is the, the region north, of blue and the region northeast, and the yellow, the region northwest, and the and Red, the region southeast, and I live here in Minas Gerais, in the capital Belo Horizonte, and the south, uh, and the orange, the region south. And Brazil has uh, 26 states and one the uh, federal district, and the capital is here in the, is Brasilia. And each state has their local federation or association uh, with FIVB. So, Amazonas, Pará, each, each state has one volleyball federation and uh, association in, in volleyball. In the, the last two weeks ago, you have the election for the, the, the president for F this. And the Brazilian Referee Commission, the structure, is uh, you have you have one president we have one president is george kuroki is uh, international volleyball retired you have five members for each region just one member for each region okay and one secretary currently i am the secretary and i have many many works believe me <laughs> and the referee categories in brazil Brazil has nowadays 1,954 9, 9, 9, uh, 1, referees and 188 square registry on Brazilian Referee Commission, uh, Brazilian Referee Federation. And Cobravi, Brazilian Referee Commission, uh, as I mentioned before, has four categories uh, 
cat, uh, referee categories. The first one is regional. The second one is as, aspiring rational. The third one, national. And the fourth one, international. Uh, and the referee, when they reach the, the, each uh, the, the category regional, for example, uh, they need to, to at least two years to uh, try to, to make a course for uh, a, a promotion in the next category, at least two years. Usually, and three or four years, if you're a good referee, of course, it's not all referees can reach in the, the next category, you know. And before registering in the first category, uh, regional, uh, each state have their own classification system. Because in, in Brazil, when you enter, you make a course, and after you begin in your career, it's not uh, in, registered immediately in, in, in CBV, Brazilian Federation. You need to stay, but my state, for example, you have a category A, B, C, after B, after C, you are registered in the regional, the first one for, for Cobravi. So each, cat, each state has responsibility, uh, re responsible for, for the dimension of the, the, the categories before. The referee training course. Each state uh, federation is responsible for organizing training course and the beginning of career before is the, the referee is staged the category one regional. And Recobrav comments two criteria. The minimum age of 18 years, but it's possible to, to start before, okay? Depends of the, the each, each federation, the state federation. And high school degree is, uh, is compulsory, okay? And the, the referee training course requirement. Uh, and Cobravi, of course, the state is, is responsible, but, but Corvari, uh, Cobravi recommends the classes training at least 40 hours class. And this 40 hours class, and you study all, all, all all of the rules, presentation, the, the referee guidelines and instruction, and case book. Of course, it's impossible in 40 hours to study all rules, all referee guidelines, and all cases. And just cases and case book and the guidelines, you just a presentation for, for the referee and to show there is many materials in the FFE beside and the Brazilian. Uh, volley Brazilian uh, volleyball site in, in English, in Spanish, and Portuguese as well. Okay, in this forty hours, you have two hours at least for two uh, two specific disciplines: psychology and sport, uh, sport psychology, two hours, and sport law, uh, sport laws at two hours. These are the, the, uh, training, uh, the class training. For the practical, after the, the, this, the 40 hours at least, you have all, uh, eight hours for all candidates to practice the rules as first referee, second referee, scorer, and line judge. It's compulsory. All candidates need to pass to, to complete the all rules. Independent if the if the the candidates I I would like to be just a, a scorer it doesn't matter this part of the, this practical you need to to practice in all rules okay for those approved the internship will last uh, about six months of course it's not uh, because some states use the different way uh, some states for example. And the, the state of the north, they don't have many teams, many matches during the, the, the month. Maybe six months is, an, is, is not enough to complete the internship. Maybe they count um, about a match, 20 matches, 30 matches, I don't know. And the, the, each state is responsible. And the states, you have volleyball, like my state, Minas Gerais, Sao Paulo, Rio de Janeiro. Usually they use six months. Okay. 
evaluation for category promotion. Uh, there are th uh, three criteria. The first one and uh, the promotion. In this case, the, there is a referee and uh, try to reach another category, uh, upper category. And the first one is conduct. And it, there, are, there are three options, apt, unfit, or apt uh, the behavior with the other referees, maybe the body language, maybe the some small things is not very good. And all remarks, of course, is best for the candidate to improve, to improve your, your behavior for, for the match. The second point is the written test. For example, the category two, when do you try to reach the, 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 the one for two, from one for two, uh, the candidates need to score 70 per, 70% in the written test. And the category aspiring national, from aspiring national to national, and the written uh, test, uh, the candidates need to score 8%. And the practical test, the minimum average at 90% in all rules. In this case, the, the candidates uh, need to work. And at first, ref, at first referee, second referee, scorer, and line judge. Okay? And need to pass for all these rules. And average 90% in, in, this, in, in all this. Each criteria may stop the candidate's promotion. And uh, so you, you, you have, in Brazil, you have, it's, it's very important, the conduct, the, the, the written test and the practical, because sometimes you have the, some referee has the, uh, knows the, the rule by heart, but in the practical is a disaster. Or the conduct is, is a gentleman, but he cannot explain the, for, for the players, for, for the coach uh, uh, can apply the rule correctly. So in this case, you need to, to, to take together to be a very good referee in conduct, ranking test, and practical. One of these is can stop the candidate's promotion. This evaluation will be carried out by one or two COBRAB instructors, depends of the competition. And after I show for you what kind of competition you you, you realize the, the, this, this promotion. If you have few, few teams or in few referees, uh, the Cobra just use one referee, but you have more teams, more referees, Cobra use two uh, instructors for this competition. Currently, uh, Cobra has 10 instructors and 13 guest instructors. You try to uh, increase the number of the, the instructors, but you need to educate, you need to show you the, 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 the new points for a, I, thought, I hope as soon as possible, you have uh, 23 uh, instructors in Brazil. And beginning to, to implement evaluation according to the referee coach concept. Uh, I ask, uh, Few years, few few days ago, for to Sandy, uh, and Sandy sent me um, a lot of materials about the referee coach. He was try to to implement this concept in Brazil. And the first, uh, first of all, you someone to 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 translate and and adopt our reality. Of course, it's, it's different in the FIVB and uh, and some in some regions, some countries. And after you, you have, uh, you, you have, we have a meeting with an uh, online meeting, of course, because imagining uh, in a meeting means uh, many referees is, is impossible, or 23 instructors is, uh, is, is not possible. And in this case, you have uh, many uh, online me uh, meetings for the, to implement the, the refereeing uh, coach uh, concept. Evaluation for the category promotion. And uh, an evaluation of the written test 
uh, you have 20 questions. And in this 20 questions, you have four questions in English. Because in Brazil, in Brazil is, is very different. If you know, Petri has, Petri knows because that Petri worked here many times. I know Petri has an apartment in Rio de Janeiro, I think so. I'm not sure. And in Brazil, only Brazil speak Portuguese in South America. All, all countries speak, speak, por, speak por, uh, Spanish. And the first uh, country speak in English, I think so, is U USA. And sometimes, uh, uh, and the Brazilian that's, that study English, in, you try to implement and to show for everyone how, how it's important to study English, especially for the, the, the referee uh, would like to be an international referee. And the candidates looking to the continue for the, from aspiring candidates to the national category must have the university degree. It's a law, there, there, is, a, there, there is a law many, many years, and I start, and I enter in the Brazilian, uh, in, a, in Brazilian, and we start my career in the free. There is a, there was the, the, that rules. And all national referee in Brazil have a uh, uh, university degree. It's an interesting point. And this championship for the category evaluation. You have two, one main category uh, championship in the, you have another one. And sometimes you have uh, the local championship, but usually you have the, uh, for the best players and for each state, and uh, for for the, the promotion, this 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 competition, this, this championship has four category, uh, two categories for for men and for women. For women, you have under eighteen, and under sixteen. For men, under nineteen and under seventeen. In this competition, you have three divisions: the special division or or the best eight teams in Brazil, eight states in Brazil. The first division, you have, you have more eight, eight teams, eight, eight teams. And the second division, up to eight. Sometimes you don't have eight here because sometimes you have five, four, just five, four, or four teams. It's, uh, it's rarely you have eight teams in second division. But you have for each categories three championships is possible to evaluation the referees. It's a in in the you count the four categories you have to in the total twelve competition to evaluate the referees. And there is another competition and the Brazilian CBI and the competition for clubs is not a state for clubs specific for clubs and clubs some of better know clubs are Minas Tennis Club, Sada Cruzeiro, Taubaté and very strong clubs and they work and they youth players is is different they this competition has more categories for women you have four under 18 under 16 under 15 and 14 and for men, has one more under 21, 19, 17, 16, and 15. In this competition, has, don't have more division, just one, one division. And up to 16, 16 teams. And 16 teams, imagine it. It's a, one match is usually at the team's players twice a day. And in this competition, you, have, you, you need more um, referees, more teams, more uh, instructors to evaluate the, the candidates, okay? And some specific points. And the first one, the CBS, the, the competition for a state. This, the rules of the, the, the competition, each state is represented by one referee. So. If you have one competition, Minas Gerais, São Paulo, Rio de Janeiro has one referee for each state. 
it's interesting point because all states can be represented here. Sometimes you have and the team in Rondonia, for example, is a state on the north. It's, if your team has a, it's a, it's a good team, is the, the, the special division, one, one referee, uh, you, you, uh, you need to be here in this, that competition. Of course, it's not all, all competition, all categories, you have uh, evaluation uh, for, the, for, for the new category. But all the, the participants have an FABB instructor and to, to try to, to show the feedback for the referees. And the second one championship is, is different because uh, in one state, for example, my state, maybe you can, you can find five teams in the same state. And in this case, the federation registered participant referee or referees. Here is not, don't have one representative for a state, in, in not one representative for teams, but answer is free at the register, of course. And the number is, uh, is, um, is uh, the, the limit, the limitation. And, and the COBRAV is encouraging the state federation to promote candidates and three interesting points. The younger candidates, because it's very common in Brazil and that the states don't have many competition. And maybe the, 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 that federation send a referee 45 years old. Okay, please, uh, you are try to think about in the future and okay, it's possible to send, but interesting, try to discover the new talent and send the, the younger candidates. You encourage, but it's not the, the rule, it's not forbidding to, to send another kind of candidates. And another point is BMI, BMI up to 25. You don't know why, because you don't have the strong guy or strong girl there. And the second point, candidates with the basic understand of English, because I, I problem I, I mentioned it before. Yeah. And develop national referee. And uh, as I mentioned before, uh, the expansion of the Cobra instructors from uh, 10 to 23. I hope as soon as possible you, you can implement up there. The implementation of the referee concept in the, in the evaluation process. Uh, now, in the next week, I will start the, uh, the translate and adopt the, the, the referee coach concept for the, uh, the reality in Brazil. And, and uh, as soon as possible, you, you can work with the, the, the program. And use the technology to assist the evaluation process because just now use the technology. It is completely different when the, the, the instructor, the referee delegate, for example, and, and evaluation and the referees are. Pentation, and at that moment the player touched the net, but you, you miss the, this fault. It's interesting, but it's more interesting show for the referee when they have this mistake. Why he missed the, 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 this foul? Maybe he was not in good position, the optical position. Maybe he was a uh, pentation in another thing. It's not uh, the, his duty. And the use of technology is, is very important in this point to show for the, all referees like Mr. Sonsak, uh, always a show for us after the match in the big competition is uh, you have the, the feedback immediately. And I think so. Ian, you can, you can record them by cell phone, the iPad or camera, doesn't matter. But it's important to show for the referee to, in, in this point to teach for the referee uh, improve the, the, that uh, responsibilities. And the commission meets, and the, nowadays 10 referees, of course, 10, 10 instructors in, 
uh, soon in 23, the Commission meets virtually whenever necessary to analyze the situation to be correct, especially in game broadcasts on TV. We sometimes have a, a problem, and do you know, there is a, a group in Facebook, a group in, in that, and there's some referees, but not official. And the Cobravi was, okay, you need to, you, you need a virtual, virtual meeting to decide and after to pass the information for the referee, for the, 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 the referee director in the state and the all referee director in the other state for the, this uh, information, the correct point, the correct, how the, the correct way to, to proceed in that moment to, to pass the same information for all, especially in the broadcast TV. And conduct uh, referring clinics online for all states. You are starting. I, you have many states, but it's impossible for all states together. You know why? Because you have 26. Imagine how many people. 3,000 people. It's, it's impossible. And you decided to the referee clinic is online for each state one by one. Is for in the many stages that participate in uh, that clinic. And referee matching uh, after, in referee meeting after the match, each match is uh, usually in Brazil and there are many, many years because it's important. If you have a, a, a referee delegate in, in, in this match, of, he's a, 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 a is a director in this moment. If it doesn't have, uh, the group can evaluate uh, themselves. And the good points, to show the good points, to, to, to talk about the good points, weak points, and what you need to improve in the next match, especially for the more graduating referees and international or national referees. And in Brazil has an idea because nowadays the Cobrav is a, a part of Brazilian Referee Federation. And there, there is a movement to create the Volleyball Referee Association. It's a different point as uh, you can't fi really fight about our rights and uh, you have more, you, you can, you can hear our, 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 our asking. And, but is, is, and uh, you have uh, some referee, there are uh, uh, lawyers, because all our uh, university uh, degree, they are preparing the documents, especially for the, for the, about the law. And now is, uh, I think this year or the next year, and the, uh, Web Volleyball Referee Association it was created officially. And this is all information I, I, I told for you. It's, it's a different because I, I referee indoor. I'm, I'm sorry because vo beach volleyball in Brazil is another sport. It's completely. I don't know one uh, beach volleyball referee. It's completely different. But thank you for your attention. If I, it's possible to, to answer some question. And yes, thank Anderson, you. thank you very much. It was very, very interesting. Uh, for such a big country, there is a lot, yeah. a lot of other information, and it's a very complicated with all the regionals and sub regionals and all this information and everything. Um, before I have, a, I have a couple of questions I would like to ask, but if anybody wants to ask some questions, you can unmute, please and join us and ask the questions. Um, I, will I have one. one. Yeah, please. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Anderson. Hi. Um, how do the instructors do the evaluation of the referees? They have some guide points. Uh, what do they use to do that? Uh, and the part is, 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 is important. Um, 
the, the, practical, the, the practical part is, is very important, especially for the, you, you divide in the, the behavior of the players, the playing ball, and you have the follow the, the same with the guidelines and the, the instruct for, for the referees. And uh, especially to, because in Brazil, it's complicated to say here, because the, the, the old instructors is, is not a instructor, it's like a, a judge, okay? And some referees are is afraid completely, uh, uh, afraid and about the, some referees and now you try to change the, the, the that mentality and to show to show for the referees like a, a teacher like a, 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 a friend of course to show for the, for all the weak points especially and to to end to show to, uh, as well the the strong points because it's important to, to the confidence of the referees, okay? Roy, um, I can yeah, hear. I have a question if it's possible. Um, who supervises the work of the, the regional commissions? Uh, each, you said that each region has its own commission and uh, one member from each region is also in the federation in the whole uh, uh, the big federation so who is in charge of uh, supervising seeing how the those regionals are working if they are working correctly and they are doing a good job or there is giving them instructions who are the the the, the member of, of cobra what what region no, who if who is who is in charge to make supervise ah. on the reg region of the regions of the the commission Yes, right. You try to create the this this team now. Nowadays, you don't have. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, you don't have. You have the president. I am the secretary. I'm responsible to 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 make many things here. But nowadays, you don't have one person to coordinate the the each members. You need you try to make this work together, and I think. When the, the referee instructor is to be, everybody work is done, I think you can use the group and put one person, a specific person, to coordinate all, all members and all referee delegates in each stage. But nowadays you don't have. Okay, I'm trying to understand a little bit how it works in, in a big country. Yes, with yes. A lot of branches and a lot of regions. Yes, um, because of this, in the, the online clinic, you, you, you are making one by one state and talk with the, the referee delegate with the state, the referee director with the state and the, the referees and the, another state. But imagine 20, you have 26 states and yeah, okay, but yeah. I, you, you almost on the half, but you need more time to <laughs> complete the two. That's what. Okay, so um, you said that there is one member from each region, which is a member in the in the general commission. Is he mm -hmm. elected? How how is he uh, gets to the commission? Is he nominated or is he elected by the region? Uh, mm -hmm. How how do I do they reach the the the, the position? Mm -hmm. uh, the, the president of Cobra, the Brazilian Referee Commission, is invited by the president and Brazilian volleyball commission and the president invites the all members mm. is the, you don't have election i think when the volleyball uh, referee association uh, it could be created in this point i think you have election for the members but the refereeing uh, commission is the invite for uh, by the president okay okay, okay. They invited they, they invited <laughs> two invites so it's only if I know you and you know me and I would invite and something. Yeah, like yeah, that. Yes, I think so. <laughs> okay, any other questions, uh, please? You can unmute and add before we pass to our final and biggest uh, member. Well, I th thank you very much, first of all, Anderson, for your presentation. Okay, uh, thank you. I'm very, very excited to 
to hear Pat about the, the volleyball development in the US. Now, now we are passing to another very big country with a lot of things there. Yes, yes. I think it's, it's, it's more close than Brazil and uh, <laughs> I would like to, to hear what, what they did. They did. Last but not least, Patty Roll from the USA. Please, Patty, it's all yours. Thank you. Well, first, I, I do want to uh, I do want to say hello. We have some uh, um, some of our United States folks here, but most importantly, um, I see my uh, dear coach, my dear uh, supervisor, Tom Blue, is here, and many of you know Tom Blue. So um, he is the uh, foundation of uh, USA Volleyball. Glad when uh, I started. I think 18. I was 18 years old, refereeing for my high school team. And Tom, you saw me at about my early 20s, and it wasn't so good. But uh, um, I just want to thank Tom for being here. Uh, many of you, uh, if you don't know Tom, he was the uh, he began the program. So hey, Tom, you want to say hi? Okay. All right. I do want to check though something. I did decide, um, I know uh, when uh, Roy, when you mentioned the PowerPoint program, um, I love PowerPoint programs, but I wanted, I knew that uh, the, the two, uh, our two other friends would, would be doing that. So I decided to do a little change. I decided to kind of show you what we're doing, actually get you live into some of the things that we're working on. Now, the challenge of this format is it's not as quick. Um, so you'll have to work with me and I've, I've kind of been practicing um, my system here uh, for the last 24 hours, but uh, let's see how I do. Um, it's going to be an experiment, but I do think we've got some really cool stuff going on and I want you to take a peek um, at what's happening. I do want to play a quick video to make sure you have the sound because I do think it's important to hear the words of some of what's being said in a few of these things. But um, Roy, I'm going to kind of put you in charge of letting me know. I know in GoTo certain things have to happen for sound to play. So I'm just going to show you a quick video. Are you hearing that? Can you give me a thumbs yeah, up? Yeah, yeah. Okay, awesome. Okay, so I, I want to ask you guys a question. Um, so tell me what you how, how you feel about that, um, especially you. Uh, and I, you, I apologize for using this word, but you emerging referees, you folks that are brand new. How do you feel about that video? And I need some verbal comments. What do you think, Sandra? I'm how do sorry, you feel about? I'm sorry. I'm but... sorry. I think you didn't share the video. Yeah. I mean, I was just listening, but. Oh. Uh, Okay, oh my gosh, you guys should have stopped me. Let's get this straight again. All right, we shared it, but it, but it didn't grab apparently. Let me get my screen two back again. Let's try again. Okay, now. Yeah, make sure you, you check the share sound box as well. Yeah, no, I see that, I see that. Yep, you guys good now? It's very short. Yeah, we're, we're seeing your screen, yeah. Good, okay, thanks guys. I can't hear. I'm sorry. Okay, that's good to know. Uh, that was the one question. Let me change my mic to make sure we, uh, let me try my other mic. Yeah, because the sound is from the background, so it's very vague. There's so much. I kind of want to keep going after my collegiate <laughs> career. And that's what I've been doing for around 11 years now. Hey, everyone. 
everyone. My name is Antonio, and I'm a national referee here in Boulder, Colorado. I first got my start refereeing back in 2008 when I played collegiately in Minnesota. And I decided, you know what? I love this so much, I kind of want to keep going after my collegiate career. And that's what I've been doing for around 11 years now. I love being able to travel when and where I want. And I love being challenged to be a better referee every single point, every single whistle to help make the game better. Oh, and of course, there's the added bonus of making a lot of really easy money. So, if you're thinking about joining the ranks, yeah, because I'm biased, I'm saying it because we want to continue to grow the game. And that doesn't just apply to athletes, it applies to referees too. It's fun, it's engaging, and you have the best seat in the house to watch two teams duke it out head to head. So, grab a whistle. We hope to see you courtside soon. I can't hear you. No, no, All right, good now? No, yeah, okay. Good now? Okay. Yeah. All right, just like I, I wanted to practice this before we all got on, but where there was a few too many people, um, but we got the system now, now, so we'll be good to go. So tell me, so I'm mostly focused again, as I asked, how did you like, so let's just pick uh, uh, Sandra. How did you feel? Uh, hi, everybody. Yeah. I think my first impression impression is um, it's funny, so it's uh, it's kind of um, it's it's I enjoy I enjoy to watch it. So yes. for the first impression, if you are not a referee and if you are watching this, you you are watching something that you like, like uh, yes. the the one of the last sentences, like. Um, you are in the best seat of the house, the house, and you are watching two two teams struggling. So it's it's really cool. I liked it the way you are uh, making this marketing thing. Yes, it's motivational. Cool. So, yes, perfect. So the purpose. Um, so what we've been really focusing on, and, and I wanted to hit a little bit of the same things that our friends uh, that our friends are focused on from their countries. But what I really want to focus on is more of the, some of the nitty gritty problems that we're having, right? So just like uh, Alvino um, and, uh, and uh, um, uh, Brazil, we have, we have the same problems of, we have a officiating crisis. Now, I do want to show you, so we've been really working hard with our marketing program. So I'm just going to go down. This is our, and what's interesting I want you to see is we've built now a new website. Um, USA Volleyball went off of the Olympic platform that we use for all sports. And we've now, we've just opened our own about a week ago so that it gives us more power. We have more flexibility. And so one of the biggest goals was if you look at the top here, do you see how it says resources? And I would argue that um, most organizations have coaches, players, athletes, clubs, and officials are nowhere to be found. We were able to convince our CEO that um, officials, however small group we are, we are vital. Because when kids go to a court to play, they don't want to ref themselves, neither do their parents or coaches. So we argued that if you want to promote officiating and get great refs to make the game better, because when the, when the refs aren't very good, the game suffers for the people that are playing it. So having really super high quality referees is critical. And so we have to show that they're important. So they gave us our own site location on the web. So when a kid goes to the site to look up the national team, they actually see officials up there and they're gonna go, wow, officials, and they'll go looking. So when they go look, they run into this video that you just saw, but you know, they also come down here and they see, you know, this is our country and like Brazil, it's big. Now it looks small on the camera, but uh, as you are well aware by watching the politics for the last four years and the, and the and I would argue the the freedom of our country, um, meaning that I always say to my friends, my friends in, uh, all over the world say, you guys are nuts. And I go, let's just remember what America is. And, and I, by the way, we are nuts. I mean, if you if you could have seen us here, I mean, we were doing a lot of campaigning because I am very politically active. But you've got to realize in officiating half of our friends are Republicans and half of our friends are Democrats. I mean, officials are strongly Republican in the United States, if you didn't know that. And I would argue that 
50% of them voted for the Republican Party leadership. Now, you're wondering, well, how could they do that? Well, that's because we're crazy. Well, our people are crazy. They, they're very devoted to their parties. Um, I fortunately um, am devoted to the person that's being elected, um, so I did that. But if, if you go to our country, you see how diverse it is. If you're from the South, you know, you, you got to realize just 150 years ago, uh, we had slavery. That's not very long ago, considering what just happened in Egypt, where 3,000 years ago, they just found the tablets of the dead. I mean, our country, in terms of um, us coming to America as Europeans, is very young. So the, the critical thing about officiating and coaching and playing in our country is the fact that um, we are so diverse. And so when we're trying to, for example, um, do an education program across our country, we have a total number of 350,000 to 375,000 children playing USA Volleyball. Now that's not counting the other organizations we have. So unlike other countries that might have just, let's say Canada Volleyball, we have also what's called AAU Volleyball. That's a different organization. We have what's called JVA Volleyball. That's a different organization. And we're all actually kind of competing against each other in what we call the springtime, which is right now in the summer. We also have what's called NCAA Volleyball, which is our college volleyball, what, would, what we would argue is our pro volleyball. Because our college volleyball, if you watch the women play, they are they are international level players. They're insane. Um, so we have all these organizations and yet we all work together to help each other, um, especially in officiating. Officiating is probably the one thing where we train referees in the U.S., but they go referee for NCAA, for JBA, for AAU, and for high school. And remember, high school volleyball, we have 450,000 plus children playing high school volleyball almost 500,000 children playing high school volleyball. So uh, our country, volleyball is the most popular team sport in our country besides football. So um, it's actually beating out basketball. It's, it's beating out your European football. Remember in the US, of course, we have to be different. So we call it soccer. Um, so you, the size is what's critical for us. So what we have, as other countries have, is we have a huge crisis in officiating because of the challenges with officiating, meaning the requirements, and that's a huge thing, with the, the biggest challenge, when we survey people of why they leave officiating, because we survey, we have exit interviews with our referees, and they're leaving because of the abuse and of the requirements but particularly the abuse and officiating. So if we get to the point, you know, so the, the point of my conversation for this, this time that we have together is um, mostly our training program and what we have, and I wanna show you that, but really our recruitment program and our retention program. Um, so right now we have 1200 national referees. So our total number of national referees in terms of, we have kind of two tiers. We have a national certification and a junior national certification. And don't worry too much about those names. It's more about the tiering. So we have our level one that has 350,000 children playing. So you realize that's not enough. And then we have around 300 tier two level uh, referees, which is our junior national. And then at the regional level, um, just exactly uh, like Anderson said, at the regional level, we have 10,000 regional and provisional referees. And regional is the next tier. It's, the, it's kind of the third tier. And then the fourth tier is the provisional referees. Now, I didn't even put the international referees, which would be like our one plus, right, our stars. But, you know, we have such a huge swing. And we are similar. We have about a two-year, you know, Alina, you mentioned you two years in between. We have the same thing. I mean, I think all of us are so similar, right? We may have variances. In fact, we have a young man named Nathan who is a provisional referee, but I'm, and he's about 20 years old, but I'm telling you guys, I saw him at a tournament and I was like, good Lord, that child, and he looked like a child. I mean, he literally looked like a child. I go, that kid is so good. Who is he? So we went after him like a bullet because we don't want to lose him. For us, we lose referees within the first year or two of them like doing it. And what I didn't want to happen is him referee a year or two, get abused, get, get harassed, um, see all these requirements. He's a student. Um, he maybe has a girlfriend or a, or a, a partner that he that you know says, "Where are you? I never see you. You're refing or going to school or have a job." 
And so we grabbed him right away and we said, Nathan, you are really good for your age. We want you to come to this special program. So I'm gonna chat a little bit with you about that. So, you know, in terms of like what we're up to, our biggest goal is this retention piece. So if you see the state, you're seeing over here on the left, all these, um, like these uh, uh, locations. So we have Aloha, which of course you guys would know is Hawaii. So if they scroll down, a child that would come to this site would come into the site and they'd see Reese's for referees and the children would get this. Then they scroll down and they watch Antonio talk and Antonio is 30 years old and African-American. And by the way, we don't have a lot of African-American referees which is a big problem. If you have a shortage of referees, what you need to look at is look at what's the, what's the balance of our group. And so what I wanna to talk to you guys about too, even at the international level, if you say, well, we have a shortage of referees worldwide, which internationally, it's a little tricky. It's a little bit different story. But internally, let's say like Brazil, there's a shortage of referees. So I look at our group and we are, by the way, around, oh my goodness, in the United States, we are a majority of Caucasian males. Um, most of our, our group is Caucasian males. We have like a 5% of our referees are African-American. About less than 1% are African-American women. We have about, I would say like Brazil, I think it was right South of Brazil, maybe it was U of L, about 20% you said were women. Well, you know, in the United States, 50%, I think it's about 52% of the population of the United States is women. Yeah, we don't have any women ref. So if we're having a shortage, we need to go after the women. And it's not that we don't love the men because of course we do love the men. We love them and we love our Caucasian men, which is like in America, we keep saying like black lives matter, but we're really not, we're not talking about black lives are better, meaning white lives, we hate those people because I'm a white person, right? What we're talking about when we, when we say, and this is so important for me to speak on an international basis, when you hear people say black lives matter, what they're asking is why aren't any black people refing? And I go, I don't know, because clearly we're not promoting that. But now we, now we put up a video that shows Antonio, his, who is really, you guys, so good and a potential international. And kids will see that and go, oh my gosh, I'm a black kid and I may be able to ref. Just like now we saw Kamala Harris, who's a black, uh, who's an African-American woman. She's got a, a few different nationalities and she's the vice president. Little girls now will look and see her and go, oh my gosh, I look like her. Maybe I can be president someday. So I know some of you guys are thinking, you know, you don't really need to see your color or your gender um, at work, but you kind of do. Because I, I still think about myself. When I want to go watch something, I want to, I, I, oftentimes I'm like, I'm, I'm fascinated by people that look like me. It's just what we do as people. I mean, you know, you guys, I mean, I still, my neighbor uh, goes watch the Green Bay Packers football team because he likes to watch Packer football because he used to play football. So we kind of gravitate to what we know and who, who we see. So it's super important in terms of recruiting. But getting back to the, to the young people. So we have this group of referees, we have 10,000 provisional and regional, and we're realizing having 10,000 of that younger group, how come when they start at provisionals and let's say there's, there's 7,000 of them, and then we lose a bunch of them as they move to regional, and then we lose a bunch of them as we move to junior national, and then we lose a bunch of them as they get to national. I mean, this year alone, we've had five of our junior nationals retired because of the pandemic, because of the stress. And I'm, I, call him, I call him up and I go, you cannot retire. You know, uh, retirement is forbidden <laughs> this year. And we don't, we're really working hard not to let people retire because we can't afford to lose referees because we, we don't have enough to cover games. Now for you guys to get the scope, in America, we really do have some weird things going on. Uh, because of the convention center process, we have, we have big convention centers. So for example, in, in a month and a half, I go to Florida to, to work as a head referee at the, what's called the Sunshine Classic, a big tournament. Last year, you guys, it had 130 courts inside the facility. So I know you guys have seen some pictures, but 130 courts are stacked up like cordwood side by side. And then we have to sign referees to all 100. And I just want to just, I want you guys to grasp that because I walk in there sometimes and I get a little bit nauseous because as a head referee, which is like a head supervisor, I'm supervising that one court that's gonna have problems and parents yelling and a coach going crazy and a protest happening. We're supervising 130 courts. And these aren't professionals. These are children and coaches that are a little bit immature, coming from all over the country, from different cultures, from different 
all get along with the proper uniforms, knowing that like, and they're coming from high school. I still remember one of my referees called a, um, a, uh, a fault. And the coach, when I came over, because there was a protest, I came over and he goes, Patty, I think she's in high school right now. And what he meant was the little referee that we had just hired for, for USA Volleyball two weeks before, she'd never done USA Volleyball. She was in her mind in high school rules. And our high school rules are different than our USA rules. And none of you guys have that problem. We have so much independence in America that we have some organizations like high school that set their own rules that fit high school. And college also sets their own rules to set to fit college. So we have kind of this really kind of wild um, West experience. But the one thing about referees is that we're flexible. We've always said that you have to be flexible. You got to go into an event and have a piece of paper that tells you what's going on at that event and know the rules. But retention then of our younger referees is hard because the stress. They're stressed out because, you know, let's say we have Zach, who I have, we have Zach here, a young referee from the United States. Um, and Zach, I know you don't think you're young, but Zach's young. And uh, he, he, he's coming to events, he's trying to move up, and now he's at an event and someone's yelling at him because he's saying, you don't know the rules, get back into you know, college or get back. And it's stressful, you don't wanna be insulted. So a lot of people, when they start getting harassed, they're like, listen, I don't wanna look stupid, I quit. I'm, I, can do a, I can go work at my local Starbucks and, and not have this trouble. So our job is to make sure that we work on our education program. So let's go down a little bit. So as we get to our country, um, you know, Alaska, for example, Alaska doesn't have any national referees. And, and, you know, let me repeat myself. There are no national referees in the state of Alaska. That's trouble. So I work a lot of time with Julie, who's the commissioner, and she runs that region, just like Anderson says. And I try to get her to put a focus on the referees in Alaska, because there could be the next best referee in the country that's living in Alaska. And then just to go down, we have like a resources page where you'll see it here, and this is for all of our referees. This is not only our, our national referees, but this is what we, we access for our, our, our regions. And so we have 40 regions that we have. And so they can ask the rules and terps, all of our rules interpretation, rule books, we have case books, and ours mirrors what FIVB does. So we try to mirror as much as possible to what FIVB does However, we do have our, our rule book looks a little different because remember, not all our rules are the same as FIVB, which is not easy, um, but because the regions maybe want, you know, we love our libero serving. You know, God forbid the little one doesn't get a chance to serve. It wouldn't be fair. And of course, America is all about everybody has a chance to play. So we all love the idea the libero can serve, not because the big middle can't serve, but because we just want everybody to have a chance and it's a typical American theme. So the Libro can serve in America. So we have that like in different interpretation. We have to have that in the rule book. So we have what's called safe sport. And this is really a big deal for us. You've seen the abuse that's happening all over the world. China, I think had a, a recent um, situation with an incredibly abusive coach with this female. I think it was, a, I feel like it was a female, uh, a really different sport. Maybe it was ski, uh, cross country ski. I don't know. U.S. had huge um, abuses in gymnastics and Taekwondo. So we have required mandatory safe sport that has to be taken by our referees, by our coaches, and uh, by anybody working a tournament. Even our board of directors, anybody on a commission has to take safe sport and learn how to communicate with each other because we come from different time zones. I mean, um, you know, if you were, if you were, if you're a 70 year old coach, you might not realize that there, certain things aren't okay anymore. Or if you're a 20 year old, you might not realize the certain things you can't do anymore. So safe sport is required. It must be passed or you're not eligible to be even be in any of those duties. We have the certification levels, we have training materials, and that's like videos, paperwork, documents. We have a whole governance structure. Um, that we have where we have elected representatives to each of our different groups. And that's really interesting. Um, I wanted to open that up for you. So uh, we are very, we have a very democratic process. Uh, we used to have more of a hierarchy, like, you know, Patty Rolfe is the director of officials for the United States. And then I'd say, Tom, will you, will you serve on my international committee and help me select referees? Tom would go, love to, and he did. So we had a pretty hierarchical system. Um, not a really elected process, but so the officials didn't really have their own personal representation. Somebody hierarchically would decide, you know, these are my five people that will, uh, that I'll appoint myself, and then I'll have my own little group, which was great. But the problem is there wasn't a lot of feedback coming from the referees. So just to go down, I, Patty Rolf, just got done hosting 13 elections in a row. 
We started in December of 20 and we just got done last week. And I'm telling you, it was a long year of elections, but we elected this Officials Assembly Administrative Council. So you're seeing this group. These are all, uh, uh, nine out of the 12 of these people are elected representatives to the United States Officials Group. So they serve all the regions, all 40 regions, as well as the national and international referees and the regions, even the coaches and the administrators. So like Carlos right now, he's a great referee, a great scorer, um, uh, an international scorer for us. He's the, he was elected chair. And then it goes down. We have Lena, uh, 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 an international uh, person, an international candidate for us, a young mother. We have Tong, who's the chair of our beach commission, and it just goes all the way down. Keith is going to be our Narseka representative um, in, uh, for beach goes on and on and these all people have been elected and it's a real good mix. I mean, you're seeing men, women, young, old, moms, dads. And uh, so this is a group that we have and then you even go down and we have a, a National Indoor Officials Commission and these are appointed positions. I appoint these people to help me and give me feedback when maybe something I'm doing goes off the rails. So maybe Donnie calls me and says, Pat, Donnie goes, I'm not a real big fan of the training material this year. And he like calls me and tells me. Now we meet with these groups every month. So like for example, I could meet once a month. I meet with this National Indoor Officials Commission every third Monday uh, of a month. So our third Monday, we meet with this group. Then we have a National Beach Officials Commission. And these folks, all high level beach referees, young and old, this group has to be a mix of gender, race, and experience. We have a couple brand new national beach referees that are in this group because they've got to bring the young ones up like Greg Clark. Greg Clark just helped me finish the R2 module for children last week. So we get a lot of feedback from a lot of different people. Katie Meyer is an international beach referee that you see here. And she is also the pre or the director of the, of the NCAA um, officiating group. So we bring her in because we want to have good relations with NCAA. And then you go down and then we have our international commission and Ken Taylor, former international referee, Joe Campbell is in charge of para. So he's a sitting guy. Uh, Keith Morales, of course, is a retired international beach. Mary Blaylock, a former international. So we really have para, beach and indoor on all these commissions, every single one, so that all groups are represented. We're a little different than Anderson is that we are like Patty Roth, director of officials. I'm in charge of beach, indoor and sitting. So I'm in charge of all of that. So we try to get a, a wide range of people. Now I want to really quickly go, do you, have, you guys have any questions on that? Kind of like how we try to have a democratic process for involvement of all of our referees. Because everybody, like I was elected a couple years ago um, as the at-large national referees representative. And that's a long word, but basically there was an election and the national referees picked a referee to represent them on this one commission we had, and then I'm their voice. If, they, if there's things that are happening they don't like, they come to me and then I bring it to the commission. We have a really big, um, we really have a big uh, presence with our referees, both our provisionals all the way up to our nationals and both sitting beach and indoor. Any questions on that? Uh, Patty, Patty yes. uh, I have one question. Uh, yes. 40 regions, uh, but 50 states. Um, and I yes. saw some states uh, there, like California, Northern California, and South Dakota, but also some states. How you you uh, you you understand how you um... break it out? Example would be the North Country region. I'll show you a little bit about that. You see the North Country here. You're seeing Minnesota and Canada. By the way, if you don't know your geography, which is fine, Canada is above our country, and so you see Minnesota here. Now I'm in the BG region right now. I'm in Wisconsin. Our office in Colorado Springs got closed down because of the pandemic, so I went back to uh, my family is mostly from Wisconsin. So I'm living here now. But Minnesota is one of the most popular volleyball hotbeds in our country. North Dakota and South Dakota, not so much. Okay, not too much volleyball. Um, they have a little bit, particularly in the high school, but not in the clubs. Um, I would argue that's more than what you guys would realize, but for an American type of thing. So they combined those three regions because North Dakota and South Dakota didn't want to start their own region. Because by the way, as you, as uh, both um, Lino and Anderson said, it's a lot of work running a region. I mean, it's just a lot. You got to do all the training. You got to, 
Um, if you're a commissioner of a region, it's not only you you got to deal with the coaches, the players, and the officials. Your job is to like do all of those things. Like my only job is the refs. But if you start a region, you're in charge of every aspect. So those two states said, no, thank you. We'll join Minnesota. So they're called North Country. The same thing you see, you see Northern California, they have Nevada. So that's how some of the states kind of combine themselves. Um, Badger region is really big. So we kind of are, uh, Wisconsin's now by ourselves. So that's how we get down to 40 regions. And then if you're a member of that region, you could be a member as a coach, as a player. You can even parents. I just had a parent call me because she got to the wrong phone number yesterday from the Great Lakes region, which is right below the Badger regions right here. Um, uh, she wanted to be a chaperone and be a member so she could line judge for her kid because she doesn't want her kid line judging because the poor little baby's tired. So she goes, I want to help my team and my baby's so tired. I don't want her to have to line judge. So I'm going to line judge on behalf of my team. So we got her signed up, got her background screening done and got her safe sport done. So you guys, our parents, I'm telling you this right now, our parents are nuts. And we love our parents, but they're crazy. And the second thing, because of the political system we're in right now, and everybody is yelling and mad if I don't get what I want, our parents have even gotten a little bit more demanding on what they think you know, is right and wrong. So we've got a lot of parents getting involved now just because of the culture, but we're also taking them in because we're saying, okay, you wanna be a member? By the way, a member has to pay dues, so that helps us financially. And you wanna do line judging? Good, then you won't be yelling at the children and you'll know how hard it is and maybe you'll stop having the other parents yelling. So for us, we thought it as a benefit. So it's been super cool. But you know, what I really want you to see is USA Volleyball did a great thing by saying you guys are as important as the coaches, the athletes, everybody else. So that was, this was our first step. Now let me quickly, oh, sorry, any more questions? Yes, um, hi, um, I'm interested to know um, how, how how is the funding? Uh, is it government funded or, and how is, uh, what is your relationship with uh, the referee nominations? I mean, who, who uh, signs the referees for their matches? Um, uh, yes, well, yes, we will. Our country is very unique. So if we have a big tournament, so for example, we're going to have, and by the way, every weekend we have huge tournaments across the country. Like this weekend, we'll have a number of tournaments both big kind of qualifier tournaments that are more national in caliber. And then we'll have like, you know, Sophia, you might decide I want to, I'm running a club and I want to make some money for my club. So you might host a tournament with five courts, or maybe you'll use a couple schools in your, in your city, you'll host a tournament and you can do your own tournament and then you hire your own referees. So if we're hosting a big bid tournament or a qualifier, which is more of a national event, um, we're hoping we're hosting a big tournament in March as a national qualifier event. It'll have 80 courts this year, not 130, because you guys, that was a mistake. We shouldn't have had 130. So now we split it up into two weekends because, by the way, we hosted a 130 court tournament the same day Boston was hosting a 100 court tournament, the same day Denver was hosting a 150 court tournament, the same day. And so all these places were hosting these big tournaments and our referees were gone. We had no referees left. So that's why I had a little girl who'd only ref for two weeks, refing on court 87 in the lowest division. And she kind of forgot how to referee. So we decided we have to have a quality of referee. So we agreed that we'll make it smaller and then split it over two weekends and have better luck with getting good referees because we don't have enough referees. Our biggest problem right now in every sport in our country, and I would, I would argue across the world, is we have a referee shortage because of the lifestyle is too hard. I mean, it's besides the getting yelled at, um, the commitment is so big. So yes, um, we're really working on that, and I'm going to show you what we're trying to do for that. Patty, Any, Patty yes, sir. Can I jump in just for a second and, and ask part of so Sophia's question? There, yeah. is no, there is no government funding in volleyball in the United States. It's all through membership in USA Volleyball and in your region. So, and then the tournaments run themselves. They, they make money on their own. So that's where the money has to come from. There is no government funding. And this is the interesting thing. You guys have all heard about the bubble coming up for VNL, right? So, you know, when you talk about the bubble, you know, USA being, you know, I'm, 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 I work for USA Volleyball. So we're like, yeah, we want the bubble. But the question is, they say, you know, where's the money? 
because FIVB needs needs some funding and we don't have any government to go to. I mean, that, that funding for that event's gonna have to come out of USA Volleyball and that's our challenge. We, we definitely don't have government funding. Um, and as you, as you watch our government, our government is really kind of fascinating. So it's a, it's a, everything is generated, as Tom said, by our membership dues that, that people pay. Okay, let me quickly just jump over. I, I, I tried to uh, kind of organize my tabs here as best I could. So if we go over here, what we've been able to do is generate kind of a marketing campaign for our youth. So I'm gonna just talk about the kids right now. Um, we know, as Alvino and Anderson said, is we have to start at the youngest age, age group. It's not like you can, right? You need to get the kids, because remember now, you have all these kids playing, and you, and particularly we have out of 375,000 children, 300,000 of those children are women. So there shouldn't be a shortage of women coaching, administering, or officiating because they've all played. We have more women playing than men in our country. So our recruiting is really geared towards um, getting these kids, once they're done playing and they go to college, is getting them right about college. If they continue to play in college, we try to get them to ref a little bit. And even in club, these kids, when they're playing club volleyball, which is what we call it, they actually have to ref normally as a line judge and a scorer and a R2. That's their job. Very few regions have them R1 because it's just, a, you know, we don't want kids doing that because um, of the parent behavior, to be perfectly honest with you. So we need to get them there and say, do you kids, and by the way, in America, we pay pretty well just because it's the way America is. I'm not saying it's right or wrong, we just pay pretty well. So if you're a 16 year old girl or boy, you can make around 25 to $35 an hour refereeing. And I always say to children and to my husband or to you, where can you make $35 an hour? You can't. And if you're 16, I keep telling these kids, instead of going to, to work at your local Walmart or Starbucks, come and referee once a month, you'll make more money in that day that you work than you will the whole month working at Starbucks. And it's actually starting to work. We're getting children that are putting themselves out there and refing, but we have to have an adult there to make sure that none of these coaches yell at them or parents. Otherwise, they're gonna go, who wants to get yelled at? Because children, children aren't putting up with that anymore, a bad behavior. When I was young, I mean, I got yelled at all the time by my father. My father was old school German. Uh, beatings would begin if we didn't behave. So, um, but now kids are, are treated at a much higher respect level and they don't, they don't understand why people are being super mean to them. So uh, that's something that we're working on as behavior of our coaches, but that's another topic. So let me start, let me talk about our national team development program. So if you see the title here, we just, I'm just showing you, this is our Facebook page for USA Volleyball. Um, I'm not going to show you the top of it because the most important thing I wanted you to see is USA Volleyball has a Facebook page and on the Facebook page are, for example, you know, we have right here the video right here of um, one of our referees, Jason Marshall, similar to Antonio. So we've put out three videos in the last month, recruiting videos that are going to the children to get them and the coaches to get them to work for us. And that just started a month ago. It started right before Christmas. We started a huge recruiting campaign. And again, Sandra, like you said, it's fun. The kids are like, oh, that looks like a blast. And look at that, look at that black dude. And, he, and he's young and he's like hip and um, I can make some cash. And, and it looks like they have, it looks like it's a fun team, a good family. And they go, I'm going to try it. Um, but if you go down here, you're seeing, we have what's called a national team development program. And that program is, was for athletes. So it was, it, it's, they completely changed the program here in the United States. It's a, it's a recruiting team, a recruiting tool for our different so of course we have the Olympic team, the national team, the A1 and two team, just like every country, all these development teams all the way down. So we have a number of teams that play all over the country and all, have all these tournaments. But I looked at that and I went, we need a national team development program for refs. So we just branded our volleyball group to match the name for our athletes. So we have what's called a national team development program that our officiating group thought would be a great idea. And now we're gonna use the same branding as the athletes do, and it's gonna be for young officials. And now we're gonna have an event in July where we invite the top 50 emerging young kids from the ages of 18 to around 30 to work with our most experienced and high level referees as partners. So I wanna tell you guys something. So this is my two cents. If I'm a great player and say, let's just say Paolo, uh, you look like you could have been a player. Is that true or no? I think he's not even paying attention. 
So, uh, yeah, okay, I see him say. So he's a great player. Now, if I say Paulo, I'm going to give you the opportunity when Karch was at his best. Paulo, you get to play twos with Karch Karai, right? What would you say? And he's not doesn't have his mic on, but I'm guessing he's saying, oh, my God. I get to play with Karch. And I'm asking you, how much would you learn as a volleyball player playing with Misty May or Karch Karai? I would argue that I learned the most as a player when I was playing with great players. I had the opportunity to play with some national team caliber players when I was a child. And I remember that watching them play, having them talk to me, having them yell at me, Patty, do this, Patty, do that. And I remember thinking to myself, oh my gosh, I learned so much. So we're using that same theme that we're hooking up, for example, um, Alex or, um, or Zach, Zach's getting in his car, but we, we, and Zach don't get into a car crash. We don't have enough refs. So Zach is going to, is going to ref with Tom Blue. So ref and Tom, uh, ref, uh, Zach and Tom Blue would ref together. And now Tom is going to coach Zach live during the match. And we're going to put headsets on him. So Tom, so Tom can talk to Zach um, during timeouts or in between sets and say, Hey, Zach, you know, on your transition, this, or Zach, Hey, you got to control your coach more so that they'll work during this tournament for five days at this national development um, training event that we're going to have in July. And then all of our top 50 young kids can work with these Olympic caliber. And we brought in, by the way, we brought in Hector from, from uh, Puerto Rico. We brought in Hospier, an international referee from Puerto Rico. We brought in um, a great referee out of Canada, um, one of our dear friends. Uh, we brought in Samara, another female international referee from Canada. We're going to bring in a couple different people, but we bring in all these cool people to work with these young folks. And I had a young African-American woman from uh, the South say to me, she learned more in five days of that event than she's learned, learned in five years refing in NCAA and USA. And I was like, oh my God, it was success. So we're doing a lot of pairing now where we're actually, instead of Patty coming in and coaching Sandra and Alex and saying after the match, I show you a video and say blah, blah, blah and you go, okay, thank you. I learned some and I leave. We're actually doing more intimate um, opportunities where you actually at every match have a great coach on the floor in the game working with you directly and they actually can talk to you during the game and then we have a bit like tom tom was at an event where he actually walked around and was talking to referees at a big uh, uh uh candidate program we had where he was coaching not only the coaches he came in as like an emeritus coach he was coaching the coaches but he was also coaching the um the uh the referees so we believe in a coaching program similar to the to the instructor program but we actually use the word coaching because in reality, we are coaching the refs. That's, you guys are athletes. We're all athletes. We're just doing a different kind of sport. All right, I'm going to keep going here because I only have 30 minutes. Um, this is another one. I want to show you this one real quick. And just to get a feeling of um, a young female ref. Oh, wait a minute. One moment. Let me get my mic right here. Hi, my name is Claire Hooksma, and I started repping for Bad Region last year. I got involved because I've been playing for only like 10 years now, and I'm actually about to start my senior season for Sussex Hamilton, hopefully. Last year, I thought it's kind of time for me to get a job, and my dad was about to start repping again anyways, so I thought, hey, here's a way for me to make some money while doing something that I love doing, and it fit really easily into my busy schedule from volleyball. So far, it's been so rewarding. I've gained so much confidence and independence because I have to run my own court and be the leader, even though I'm not the oldest person there. I've also got to work with some really great kids and help them grow in their love for the sport. And all the officials I've worked with have been so nice and supportive and helpful to me. And I'm so excited to start repping again and hopefully that will be soon. Okay, can you, uh, am I back now? Okay, good. So you see Clara was there, Clara's around 20. And what we really believe is so important, again, getting back to the point, is that when, I, when I'm roughing a game and little girls and boys are looking up at me, and I mean little being high school, and, and remember now, we go down to 10-year-olds. When they look up and they see Patty, they, they see an old lady. Now, I'm telling you right now, I don't feel like an old lady. I feel like I'm, you know, 30 or 40. Um, and of course, I'm in my last year at the international level, and I'm really excited about like being, uh, and I feel be better now than I've ever felt roughing. But the reality is, is what I look like to someone who's 16. And I'm sorry, I have to be honest with myself. They don't look at me and see themselves in me. 
they see grandma patty so what we want to do is put clara up there and say look at clara that's you know and, and she's thinking yeah i want to go hang out with clara i want to go rough with clara i want to go out to dinner with clara so i can't reinforce to you guys enough the importance of um of people being with their same age group i mean it's you know the question is you know, is, uh, is uh, Paolo going to come and hang out with Patty for dinner and go to the bar? No, I don't think so. You're going to go with your own kind of people. So we really want kids to be able to kind of hang out with their own. Uh, you guys have any questions on kind of that, that similar theme? All right, let's go on right to the next thing there. So we do a ton of articles. People don't really have time and they can't be too long because I don't know about you, I can start reading something really interesting, but once it gets too long, I'm like, I'm out. I got, I got way too much going on. So we have a really tight, tight, tight protocol on our articles. So this is an article written by this little girl named Jen, the, the little girl here on the, on the left. She is um, literally about 23. She is a national level referee at the age of 23. You guys, she is so good. I'm telling you, she is so good. She is also a pro player. So she just got back from, oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. I just lost the island she was playing in, but she was in Europe. She was playing for a couple of years, but then she wrote me an email and said, I've decided to stop um, playing. Um, I decided I wanna be a pro rep. Now what kid is playing pro volleyball in Europe decides that she wants to stop being a pro player and she wants to start refing? I kind of asked her if she was okay. Cause I said, are you sure you're okay? You can ref anytime you want. And she goes, no, I think I'm done playing. I've been playing since I was 10. I've been, I've, been, uh, I've been playing for about 12 years and I want to do something else. And so she came in. And so what you see is her and this guy on the opposite side, that's her brother. So we've got both of them. And he's like 27, a super cool kid. And the guy in the middle, as you can see by the gold patch, is one of our national referees. So this guy, her brother, is a, you see the red patch, that's a regional referee. She's a national and, and uh our dear friend there is a uh, is also an, uh, a kind of a high level national referee. And then she wrote an article, and I won't I won't have you read it, but she wrote an article for an entire officiating group for all the old people and and our young kids. And you know what we found? Our senior referees thought it was the coolest article ever because I told her tell her why the seniors referees mean so much to you. And because remember Clara talked about how nice she was treated by all the referees. That was all by the all the older referees, by the way. Um, she was treated so well by the older referees that she wanted to stick with it. So um, Jen here was talking about how much great training she had, what great people there were, what great coaches she had. And so this is encouraging, again, people to continue. And we do a lot of um, kind of outreach again for that. Now, I want to show you just kind of like how this looks. So we have a website. This is under, and you'll see up here on the upper, I, I don't know how when you're looking at what you see, but over here on the left, it says parents. We have a parents newsletter. And in the parents newsletter, they have a lot of things like agony of the parent, and which is a funny article, by the way. And then it has all like a parents articles just for parents of kids that are playing USA Volleyball. And remember, if there's almost 400,000 children, there's almost 800,000 parents. So we really do a lot of uh, work with parents and we send, we create articles for parents that are talking about be nice to the refs. So we have a video for parents that say, hey, you know, your kids are going to become refs. You, if, you're, if you don't like refs by being meaner to them, you're going to lose referees and the quality is going to continue to drop. And we kind of described it a little bit like a marriage. If, you, you know, if you're abusive to your, to your employees or if you're abusive to your uh, children or if you're abusive, they're going to quit and leave and you're going to be alone. So we're trying to explain if you're abusive to refs, they're going to do the same thing. And to remember that referees were children run. So if you're yelling at a referee, you're yelling at your children because you know these kids aren't gonna wanna work and the parents are starting to live. We have is, um, or one of the things we have is that, and then we have a, a thing to athletes and we have articles that go to them. So for example, um, how to serve, but in here we have articles regarding how to treat referees, how to, how to, uh, how to win people over being nice. A lot, of thing, a lot of times I hear when I go to Europe is that you know, if I'm mean, they'll alter their calls. Like people say, well, see, you, you know, if I yell at you, it'll make you pay attention. No. It has no bearing. I mean, all the international referees know that if you get yelled at, if you got to give cards, if people are nice to you, you still referee the same way. I mean, that's our profession. So parents and, and coaches and players have this idea that if they are mean to us, well, then we'll really pay attention. But no. And actually being nice. I always, my mother always used to say, if you use honey, that's, you know, with bees, that's how you keep bees from stinging you. You know, use some honey. You'll get, you'll get farther with honey. And we would argue that if you treat referees better, you're going to have a lot better success 
people are going to listen to you more when you treat people well. So that's one of our big educational tools. Um, another element, as you see, is that you look across, you see, and I don't know if you can see this very well, but you see coaches, parents, athletes, officials, and clubs. I mean, we're now playing a ma major play on that with the, with the teams. Now, I'm going to quickly kind of move through, um, as we, because we're close to time here, quickly move through some of the things that we send out, because I want to, what I want you more to see is like what we're doing to engage our people. So this is a newsletter that went out. We just started this For the Love newsletter, and I know it's kind of corny. But we believe loving kindness, and I know that's shocking for an American, but we believe loving kindness is the only way. So I know that we had a president that, um, I don't know your opinions about our last president, but, and I don't really care, to be honest with you. But I wouldn't say that he was the most loving and kind man, which is why we have so much division. But in volleyball, we want everybody to come together like the Olympic movement. So that's why I love sports and why I'm in sports, because I can go to Iran and see my buddy Shamiri. I love his wife. She has a Pilates class. She wears USA volleyball gear only in her Pilates class, however. He says she can't leave her Pilates class because she's afraid of what will happen to her with USA on because of what USA has done to Iran and the Muslim population. But with Biden here, he lifted the ban on Muslims. Thank God for that. Um, but see, that's all a part of the culture. We have to change the culture. And sports is where we say we're all one big family across the world. So we have this for the love of the game because we think it's for the love of the people that, that are in it. And we have articles. We have like, um, here's Tong, our beach guy. Um, we have, you know, boost your mindset. So I don't know about you guys, but I've gained a few pounds during the pandemic. All right, I put on a few pounds. And so I'm really working out because when I put my refing pants on for the first time last week, I was a little bit scared. And so, you know, we're trying to say, how do you stay positive during a pandemic? And there's an article about that. We give a high school update on what's happening in the high schools because we care about high school, even though it has nothing to do with us. We have a letter from Patty Rolfe. And this basically is a love letter to everybody about how much we love them because we do. Then it goes all the way down. We talk about beach. This guy, Barry Mano, is in charge of our biggest officiating body in the country. It's NASO, the National Association of Sports Officials. He's in charge of all like Super Bowl refs, NBA refs. I got lucky this year and I got on that board of directors. And Barry has a message to the refs that we put in here because we thought the referees should hear. The number one guy in the country with all refs talk to them about how important they are. And then it goes on and on. We have a, a referee from Hawaii who's one of our national referees, Wayne. He, he's put into the Hall of Fame. So we try to acknowledge people like, hey, cool, look what happened here. Somebody got married. Somebody, somebody's a Hall of Famer. Here's some, here's some training with uh, your mental health. And then the final one, which I thought was really fun, is we put in attention our guest officials. If you want to come and ref in the United States, like we have a lot of Puerto Rican referees come because of the huge hurricane that hit Puerto Rico and the whole country has been shut down. There are no things that are happening. And then the pandemic hit, it's a disaster for our, our Puerto Rican friends. So many of them are coming to the United States to work because they have to feed their families. So we have a process now for our, our, our friends, our foreign guest officials to come and ref. And so here's some instruction for them on what to do and how, who to contact to do that. But then we put, of course, our de dear friends, uh, Juhi and, and Lou on here um, just to show, look how much we love our friends. So that's a little bit of that. Now, let me quickly come over here. Now, we have a national database that is new this year. We had an old one that was tough to use. We have a new one. So you'll see, and I kind of got right to the spot. You'll see Patty Rolf here. Now, as a supervisor, I can get in and see Patty Rolf. But I'll skip that. Now, Patty Rolf, I'm going to be Patty Rolf the ref. Now, if I, I can log into my profile as Patty Rolf the ref, and you'll see that if I go to my memberships, I'll see my memberships. And if I click on that, I can see all my memberships. Now, don't mind looking at mine because mine has got a lot of stuff. And that's just because of who I am. And I've been around for almost 40 years. So you can see here that I've done my safe sport training. Um, so it shows here my safe sport certification refresher too. All this stuff is from the last three or four years. You'll see I did my code of conduct. I did my membership, blah, blah, blah. Then at the top, you'll see the word eligible. And that tells everybody that hires me across the country that I'm eligible to rep in their tournament. So that's cool too, because now you know, let's say it's, uh, of, you know, you're hosting a tournament in um, some part of uh, Portugal and you need to know that the referees, you know, aren't from prison, right? So this tells you that I passed my background screening. When you go into the website, you can see, okay, Patty's eligible to ref. I can hire her because I know she's a safe person to hire.
But what the cool thing is, as an adult referee, as a coach, and as a player, I can go to what's called the academy. And you guys, this is the coolest thing. And I do, I'm going to try and end kind of with that. I've got a couple more things I want to show you. But as I go into my academy, I have what's called a content library. So I'm going to swing on it. This is where all my coursework is. Now, this is just getting off the ground this year. It's new and we kind of reformatted it, but let me go, and I'm sorry about the names, but we thought the name was fun. So let me go to the whole shebang. And in America, the whole shebang means like, it's got it all. It's like a, cor a car that's all dressed out. So the whole shebang is all of our coursework that we have. And we have about 80 courses for juniors and adults. So we have about 80 coursework that you can take. And I'm gonna just show you um, one. I do wanna show you like right here, you're gonna see critical rules and points of emphasis. This module right here is required of all of our referees, provisional to international. This highlights all the things that are super important this year. Maybe we have a rules change. Maybe we have a uniform thing that was weird. Maybe last year referees really didn't control coaching behavior very well. So we highlight things that they need to do. But the really fun one that we want to show you is we redid all of our national coursework for kids. What we're trying to do is build a national standard of online course content. Sometimes, like we heard from, um, from uh, like Anderson, that maybe in Brazil, every, all the regions do something different. And they can. In our country, each region is their own business, and they can do what they want. But what we don't is we don't want that. We don't want like if we go to play in Alaska, if they do things completely different than what we're used to, it's kind of hard to get along. That's why internationally they're trying to have this very standard international training so that we're all doing the same thing. So in the US, we're doing the same thing. So we have 40 regions in a huge country. We want to make sure that when Patty Ralph as a player drives from the Wisconsin to Florida, I feel I got the same reps. So right now, I'm going to show you this kind of first video. And this video, we just completely redid it. We used to have children pretty much take an adult module. And I will tell you, I'd have parents call me saying it was the most painful experience. They, it was the most painful experience when these parents and children watched these videos. They would say they were so long, so boring, and so horrible and they were angry with me. And so I would apologize because they were long. There'd be like two hours of online training for somebody who's 12 years old. So we redid the whole thing. And let me, I'm gonna just do this one. I'm gonna do just a little bit of it, but I want you to get the kind of the feel of, of this. This is a 14 and under module. We only do this for- Your second referee module. If you experience technical difficulties or need any assistance with your USAV Academy coursework, please visit the USAV Academy Help Desk. You'll find a link to the Help Desk on each course page under Help and Resources, or simply visit help. Your work as the R2 is an important part of having a successful match. Before the match, be sure to bring the following things, a whistle, a watch or timing device, and a confident attitude. Once you get to the court, be sure to introduce yourself to your R1. Try to be there as soon as possible, but no later than when warm-ups start. They may give you some specific things they want from you, but ask whatever questions you need to in order for you to do your best. Before the match and before each set, You'll get the lineups from the teams. You'll look them over and make sure they are complete. These are the things to look for. No number is on the lineup sheet twice. There's either a number or an X in each of the Libro boxes. There's a coach's signature. And there's a C indicating the playing captain next to one of the player's numbers. If you see anything that doesn't make sense, tell the R1 or ask the coaches directly to correct it before it gets put on the score sheet. After warm-ups and when the teams are in their positions on the court, you... Okay, so you, you kind of get a feel. And, and one thing that unfortunately what happened is um, the... the uh, I'm just gonna... Good. Uh, can you hear that playing in the background? No? Okay, good. I don't want it playing too much. What I want to do is have you guys, um, okay, perfect. I want to get to the little bit of the children. I want you to, but you get the feeling of it. it's very simple. I'm going to play it a little bit for it. Unfortunately, jump back to the beginning. And because it's in its uh, 
it's a, uh, I got a different kind of format. It doesn't let me kind of fast forward through because it's, it's appearing, it's looking at me as if I'm a player. And so it doesn't allow you to skip through it and not do it. So it's, it forces the children to go slide by slide, but I'm going to get to kind of the funny part, but I want to kind of finish up with um, a couple of elements that I think are super important. Um, you know, we really try to spend a lot of time just really involving kids. So you're going to see, like, I'm going to show you a little bit. So we have what's called like a, a newsletter that, that we have that goes out. This is more for the officials that we'll put on tables at every tournament we're at. Um, we don't really like paper anymore as much, but when we're at a tournament, the easiest way to reach people, especially kids and maybe parents, because a lot of our parents, once their kids stop playing, they want to stay involved because they know everybody. So we were really trying to go after the kids and the parents. So this is kind of a simple newsletter. Um, um, that we have. And then the other thing, and I want to show you something that's like, this is literally just brand new that's coming out. So we have this, this is a meeting we just have had yesterday. So if you can look on the right here, we are starting an activation program. So at every tournament, you're going to see like this easy banner up above. And I, I apologize um, if it's not quite as big as it needs to be. Uh, let me see here. Let me get it a little bit bigger for you guys. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start putting up these really fancy banners, not quite yet because the pandemic um, is happening, but our hope is at the end, by the end of this summer when our national championships happen. So we're gonna create banners that say, there's gonna be a picture of a kid playing volleyball up above or officiating and it's gonna say, hey, friends, you wanna make some serious cash, you wanna work with your buddies, you wanna stay connected to the game, we want you. And then we have it to the parents and the fans and say, hey, we want you to work. And we're going to have this kind of this really cool bannering system and then contact. So the, and a final element that we're having in this whole process of recruitment is then we're going to have what's, what we have. And I apologize because this literally just got put together yesterday. We're going to start using like this recruiting where and, and during the pandemic, by the way, we can't do this. So we're going to do more of the like the visual and then we're going to have the website where they contact us to recruit. But next year, hopefully when the pandemic settles down, we're going to have what's called bag tags. So if, if you're roughing a match and you see this great kid working with you, and remember, all the children, either line judge, score, or R2, will hand them this bag tag and say, hey, you're the best. Think about reffing. Contact your region officials chair. So we really are going to be starting this major recruiting campaign for our, um, for our children and for our parents and fans to get them involved. Um, other than that, I really, I'm not going to make you hold on because I know some of you guys, um, it's early for me, so, uh, uh, but I know it's late for some of you guys. So I'm going to kind of just finish up here and let me pull my little banner aside, finish up here with, there's nothing more important than engagement. And I know that Alvino, I mean, and Anderson, both of you guys talked about like, you know, reaching out to the referees and having their opinions more incorporated to what's happening. Because I do think we're having, we're losing referees, particularly in the United States, we're having a reduction of refs because they don't feel like they belong to the team, that they're working, but they're not heard. And so we have like a lot of net, we like we have a national candidate survey where we ask them, you know, what do you think? Do you want to work during the pandemic? You know, are you feel comfortable refing? What can we do? And then this survey just went out two weeks ago to our national referees. Are you currently working? Um, is USA Volleyball providing a safe environment and will you work? And, you know, how do how, you know? Uh, just how did you become a referee? What do you want to see on our website? So we're sending out a lot of like um, uh, flyers and newsletters, things like that. So I want to finish because I, there's a few other elements I'd love to cover, but I want to just finish with um, you guys being able to ask any questions that you have or uh, stuff that's going on. Let me unshare my screen here. Well, first of all, Patty, I would like to say thank you for your presentation, for, for this uh, all this information. This is very, very exciting to see that most of the development and most of the things are done online in the USA and the technology is very much permanent in, in your uh, uh, federation. Uh, from all this information, all the leaflets, all the, the, the newsletters, all the information that uh, just to maintain this online must, uh, must take a lot of people and a lot of uh, manpower, I guess, to, to to work about that. I think it's important to say something. Um, you know, because of that, we, we lost 35, 40% of our staff. Um, last June, it was very painful. USA Volleyball um, had to make huge cuts. And so 45% of our staff uh, got cut. I lost both of my, my, my staff members. So I was a, I was a operation of one. Um, <laughs> from June 
to this, the beginning of this month. So I literally was trying to like generate the energy level uh, of our, our officiating program. But what I realized pretty quickly, because over the last two years, we've had a really big outreach program where we meet with seven different groups every month on a video call, Roy, just like you're doing. So we meet with the, with the national referees once a month. We meet with our, our regional officials chairs once a month. We meet with the region beach chairs once a month. We meet with the international referees once a month for an hour. We meet with the international scorers once a month. So all this networking has paid off. And I would say that almost everybody comes. Um, we have normally 50 people on one of our regional calls and there's only 40 regions. And what happened was because we had so many people involved and they felt like that they felt like they belonged to the team. When all of a sudden I'm having trouble, I said, I need help with these videos. We need, we, we promised to do the videos. What are we going to do? And we had people volunteering. All these videos are volunteers. All these articles. I just called up Jen and said, Jen, I need an article, 650 words. I need it by in two weeks. She's like, okay, she did it. So I didn't do the article. I don't have time for articles. In fact, Roy, I got to be honest, when you said, Patty, you know, I, I, you want to do this, my first step was, God, no, I don't need another thing to do. I was scared because it's been so crazy busy because our season is just elevating now. Our, our, you know, we're really picking up speed. We're, we're right in the middle of the season. It's crazy, but um, it's important that, I mean, you're, this group is so amazing. And this is the thing, Roy, I'm here because I know Roy. I'm here because I've been to this, these meetings. And so I would say that even in, in smaller countries or less funded countries, um, you have to take advantage of your people because many people will volunteer their time if you spread it out and use enough people. And we have a big country with a lot of refs and a lot of talented refs. So I tap on different shoulders all the time to get free work done. I mean, our case book's being worked on by a woman who's a great writer. Um, she's an incredible professor. And so she's writing our case book for us. I mean, I'm not doing it, which is great. So I think you've got to take advantage of your people. And, oh, and I, you know, I do want to show you one thing because for example, I want to do training for our international referees and our national referees, but I can't do the video. We don't have the money. I have a guy that's in charge of our IT. He does all of the video, the, the website. I mean, we do have one guy that does that for the whole place. And we have a guy that does all the modules, the creation of all of our coursework, our exams, our clinics. But the reality is I, he can't do this other stuff. But one thing that we did do is we accessed, and I'm going to pull it up real quick because uh, I do want you to see this. When, you, when we were chatting, I thought, oh, my God, you guys got to see this. Um, did it work? Do you see the screen? Uh, yes. Um, let me make sure that I have the right screen. Here we go. So for example, I just talked to the Big Ten. I talked to her um, um, earlier and I said, can I show what, because this is what they do for college referees. So college referees, they have this, what's this called, this DV sport. It's just a software program. And like, and let me just show you a quick video um, just of how this works is I'm utilizing this Pittman back to serve. Franklin with the dig. Sent it over to Norris on the left side. Michigan State asking for a touch here. Norris was clearly going for high hands. It looks like Kathy George is going to use her little green card another time. <laughs> we'll see if we can get another look at it. But yeah, two quick challenges there. Yeah, I mean, Kathy George was clearly not happy with the outcome of that first challenge. And so she's uh, made sure to share a few words with the ref on what she believes about this one, but um, hard to tell in these. I think, it, honestly, for challenges for me, uh, the touch call, especially at the net, is almost the hardest one to see. The technology is fantastic, but it's still so hard to tell if there was truly a touch at the net. I don't know if there's... Yeah, we'll see. I didn't see it different right now. Technology is good, but it's just, you know, it's still a little blurry. It's still a little hard to tell. And, and to your point, conclusive. Won't be confirmed, but they're just not going to overturn it because there's nothing conclusive. Right? Yeah, yeah. I think that's, that's, I feel like that's what often happens with touches. It's just really hard. Point will stay with the Golden Gophers. Challenge system is nice, though. It's, it's a, I love the addition of a couple years ago to, to the volleyball um, the sport of volleyball, I think it's nice to be able to say, hey, I don't think that was right, and to, and to catch it. 
So the point will stay with the Golden Gophers. Kathy George loses her second challenge. Change your microphone back. So, for example, we're taking advantage of the college. The college has all this great video stuff. And so we're going to use uh, Wally as another gentleman who runs the Missouri Valley Conference. Wally and, uh, is going to help us put together video for our national referees so we can have this program. And then, uh, for example, like Wally sets a video for us, and then he, we have five things that we, we answer. So there's the video, and then we answer some questions. Um, and I'm not doing that. I don't, have to, I don't have time to put that together right now with, a, with a, being a, a kind of a one and a half woman show. So, you know, to, to kind of close out, my, my biggest thing is you do have resources in a sense of people power. And I would argue, you know, people have said to me, well, you know, this person isn't a good public speaker, but you can't become a good public speaker until you actually speak publicly. Does that make sense? So I had a young woman that I asked to be do our national clinics and someone said she cannot do national clinics. She isn't a good public speaker. And I said, she's got her doctorate in clinical psychology. She's 40 years old. She's a new mom. She looks amazing and she's brilliant. How hard can it be? So she did her first clinic, didn't go so good. She didn't, uh, she wasn't able to get the material done. The second time she was brilliant. And she also is a clinical psychologist and works in, a, in an institution for incredibly ill men. And so she was doing the part of the clinic on, um, you know, the, the handling and deescalating. So the point is you have a lot of really talented people, but you got to give them a chance, particularly the young people. So my final thought will be here. Take advantage of all the experience you have and don't underestimate the power of your younger group. Because if you can grab those younger people, whether they're 16, 20, 30, and bring them in and get them involved and have them do things, they're more likely to stay on that, what I call the Olympic team or your Nash or your USA team. And then we can begin to build our, uh, our family. And I would argue that, in, and Roy, I'm gonna finish for me personally, I would argue that Roy's done exactly that. I mean, what Roy's been able to generate here, and, and it, you know, we have only 30 people here, but that's a lot of people because there were nobody here a year ago when Roy wasn't doing this. You know, and we're being able to generate this incredible uh, family of international people that are getting on and, and learning new things. And I think um, that to me is the most important thing. It's the most important thing in the whole world um, is to have this uh, network internally within our own countries and, uh, and internationally and, and, uh, and spend time calling people. Yesterday, I, we, I had a, rum, a referee say, I wanna retire, a young guy. And I called him, I said, call me. And he goes, why do you wanna call me? Why do you wanna talk to me? He wrote me back in an email, why? And I said, just call me. So we got on the phone, we talked for an hour. And what ultimately happened is he's just depressed. During the pandemic, he's really depressed. He hasn't been out and he just decided I'm done. I don't want to have to try and get back into it. And I said, no, we need you. We love you. We, uh, the kids love you. And I said, do you enjoy officiating? He said, yes. And I said, get your pants back on and let's get out there and get to a tournament. And he goes, okay, Patty, I'll stick out for another year and I'll get to work again. So, you know, I think we have to pick up the phone and recruit, particularly women and particularly groups that you're not seeing in the group. Like right now, I'm seeing a lot of, a lot of guys. Now, where are all the girls? Probably because, you know, and I'm, gonna, and I'm gonna do an example here, guys, and I want you to listen, because it's a cultural problem. Who takes care of the ch children? Women do. And I'm sorry, but women do. In my house, my husband stayed home full-time and watched the baby. My husband was the at-home parent. I worked as a coach. I coached 25 years. My husband was an at-home dad. He didn't work. Um, I was lucky. I got the right husband. But, uh, you know, the reality is women are normally the caregivers, which means that like women right now, this and during this meeting, women are putting their babies to bed. They're feeding their families. They don't have time to be on here. So that's a big issue because now they're not here. Maybe now they're like, uh, man, I feel behind. I feel like I'm not, you know, I'm not doing my job. We might have opinions about women. Like, where are all the women? That's because, you know, the guys have all come, but the ladies are, you know, doing laundry. I can't tell you how much laundry I have right now. My husband doesn't do laundry. Uh, I don't know why he can't seem to manage to pick up the dirty clothes and put them in the wash machine, but the man can't do laundry, nor can he clean. So I can't tell you how much we've got to get women back into the game because there are so many talented women out there, but they, they need to be encouraged. And Sandra, I got to tell you, seeing the baby in the camera, I love it. 
because you know what if why not because that's the only way potentially she can be in this camera this uh this program right now tonight is because maybe the husband's working or maybe you maybe mom's not there or grandma's not there so i think we've got to start encouraging women that whatever your circumstances please come um, I've been at an officiating event, by the way, where something bad happened and a lady lost her daycare. And she says, I just need someone to watch my baby for an hour at this tournament. And I said, bring the child, long as he's not, you know, long as he doesn't need a bottle and he doesn't have a poopy bottom, I'll watch him for the first hour. And then the, then the babysitter showed up at this tournament. So, you know, she was able to come and work and not have to cancel. So that's my final thing. Really encourage the groups that you know are struggling to uh, participate. Sorry about that. I went a little bit over. No, it's quite good. It's, as long as it's interesting and everything, it's perfect. Any questions from anybody who wants to ask something or to add something? Please, you can unmute and have a question or something to add. Okay, so I'll go, I'll go with a question. Uh, this question goes to all three participants. Um, you can start, Patty, with you. Uh, how? How do you identify a young referee, a young talent in such a big organization? Meaning it's uh, in a small country, it's much easier maybe because everybody knows everybody. And, and once, once there is a talent, it pops up and, and you see it very clearly. But, but in a very big organization, very big country like yours, like uh, Brazil, uh, even, even Portugal, how do you uh, spot that, that young talent from the beginning? Um, what are the chances of such a young talent to, uh, to arrive and to grow to become a, a, a top referee in those uh, in those uh, in your countries? Roy, great point. So you know we have that national team development program now, a new program, and it's similar. We're doing the same thing that we're doing with our athletes. So in order to identify the number of athletes in our country to be at a national team level, our Karch Karai and Jeff Spiro are two national team coaches incorporate a giant body of recruiters across the country. So club coaches and college coaches, they have connections with and contacts with. And they email them and call them all and say, hey, if you've got a great talent in your city or state, and remember, they're really close to all these clubs. I mean, they, they, really, they really reach out to the clubs. And so if there's a great player on a club in Wisconsin, maybe even in, let's say Minot, North Dakota, and you guys, Minot, North Dakota, is way out there and let's say there's a great player out of Minot they will get that kid identified because they'll be on a club in North Dakota and that could that coach will get a hold of the region they'll play in a tournament and some ref at that tournament or some coach there will will say hey she's a great player and it'll get to the national team staff because they've opened communications right they say we respect your thoughts so we do the same thing with refs so what we've empowered is we've empowered all of our referees and we've told them, you guys see a great young girl working for you. You got to get us that information. Tell us what club she's from. Now, they can't go out to a little 16-year-old and say, what's your name? What's your phone number? Because that's not legal. It's against safe sport laws. But we can contact the coach and say, hey, there's a great player, number five. We want to give her some information about um, refing. And she can be like, these kids are 16 years old. In terms of like that, that age group of provisional referees, kind of like that tier three or tier, tier four people, what we do is we make sure all of our top referees and our top referees, all of our, our kind of our thousand national referees, they go all over the country and rep. I mean, they fly everywhere. So they're definitely emailing me and they'll say, hey, Patty, I saw a great referee out of Badger region. Um, her name is Lara and you got to talk to her. And that's why we have this, this new national team development program tournament that hosts about, it's about 40 courts, it's about 100 refs, and then we have this special invitation where they come. Um, and then, by the way, that is the kind of the more elite group, those 40, and then we have even a bigger tier of about, about a couple hundred of these development um, referees, just like athletes. So we've empowered our coaches, we've empowered our, our referees, and the region officials chairs who run the regions, who see everybody, to tell us um, and to send us their names. And it's really been working for us. Okay, Avelino, how about you? Yes, the, the reality is uh, another one, but um, we, we try uh, through our uh, regional um, commissions to get some feedbacks about this. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, uh, nowadays with um, FIV wanting, wanting the good reference to, to enter more earlier, we, we need to, 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 to try to work also with the, with the, in the school projects that, that we can get 
also from some, some of the school um, uh, sports events that we get them uh, um, some feedback ab about this. And I think after, after the, we, we, we find them, the problem is more to find, after we find them, we can follow them and we know how, 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 to, how, how to, if they, to, to, to put them uh, in, in, a, in a position where they, where they, they need to, to, to grow up. Um, we don't have any specific program. I would like to have one specific support to work with these people because these people deserve to work more, deserve to work to improve more quickly because they are talents uh, as as, a, as the uh, the players. Uh, so they need to work, but we don't have these kind of programs. But anyway, um, the, the information for me, what's important is that the information flows and that you get the information as soon as possible. So that because when you see them, you know them. Uh, as, as Patty said, I saw one of these guy, guys uh, referring, and I know he's he going to be a good one. And we know this: who, who in the in the who, who are the people that are in the position to be to become uh, good referees. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Anderson, how does it done, is it done in Brazil? Yeah, uh, you you try to follow the the indication of the referee direction at each stage. After this indication, the Cobravi follow the that referee, and uh, especially if the nomination, the good competition, and uh, in, in that case, the younger man, the, the BMI, and especially understanding English, you try to, to follow. You don't have the specific uh, uh, program for, for this, like the Avelino, but you, we after the indication the Cobra will fall on this referee, especially in the in the nomination. Okay, I see that it's a quite important to have some kind of a talent program uh, to to identify them and to encourage them and to work with them specifically, maybe to give them more support in order to help them get better and and to a lot, uh, higher levels and everything. Okay, any other questions before we wrap this uh, meeting for us tonight? Nice long one, but uh, very interesting. I didn't, I didn't even notice that time flew around so fast. Okay, so I guess I would finish this meeting. I would like thank, to thank you very much, Avelino from uh, Portugal, Anderson from Brazil, and the sweet, sweet, sweet Patty from the USA for <laughs> the <beautiful laughs> information that you gave us. Um, it was very, very educational. Like, like I said, time flew by and I didn't notice it's been more than two and a half hours, almost two and 40 minutes. So um, I will upload this meeting to the YouTube. Stay tuned for our upcoming meetings as well. We have some interesting meetings with uh, players, top players uh, to listen from their point of view of the, the relations with the referees and some more sci uh, sports psychologists and uh, stay safe and healthy all over there good night to everybody good afternoon good evening and thank you for, again for joining us thank you roy thank you everybody thank bye. you okay bye bye thank you thank you, good night. Thank you so much bye bye Hi, a guy on his own with the very little uh, very little money and effort put into it um this is the one i couldn't seem to pull up quickly enough and i feel bad about that but uh um <clears throat> So when you look when you look at the video, uh, let me get up uh, some info here. Sorry, I've got multiple screens and it can be a little bit crazy here. It seems to want to. It seems to want to get. Get Anderson on here. Okay, here we go. Do you guys see that? You guys that are left? Yep. Is do you see the video? Yep. Okay, no, good. No, because no, no. Video no. Okay, now do you see the video? Nope. No, it's not playing. It's just uh oh, is it blank? The screen's the screen's not running yet. Do you see this? Yeah, yeah, we see yeah. it, but it's not running. Okay, yeah. good. No. And uh, now, now it's going. Yeah, and now it starts. This season with the Citadel. Let's go along with several kills as well. Carl with the block. Yeah, it ran to the end.
He's in with the Citadel. Let's go along with several kills as well. Carl with the block. Micah. Okay, so quickly. So what's interesting about this, and this is something new that we're going to start trying, is that this is from a guy named Wally, just a, just a, 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 a former professor. Um, but what he did was, it's basically just, it's just SurveyMonkey. You see up here on the upper left, he's just using SurveyMonkey, which is a standard, you know, a standard easy uh, software, no, no um, uh, money required. Inserting a couple of questions. And so um, when this picture expands, which it does, it shows the video and this is like a one minute, a 40 second clip. And then he asked us, and I work for his conference. He asked us, you know, was that a, a double? And then um, if it was one attempt to play the ball, answer the question. And then we do, we do, so there's a whole bunch of questions down here. He has all these videos that we can watch of like a challenge review, a ball in out, a double. And uh, it looks beautiful because it's on YouTube. It's very clear. And then he does a survey. And then once he kind of processed the survey and let's say he finds out that 90% of us in his conference called the ball in if they could and the other 10% called it out. He says, yep, it was in based on challenge review and you guys are all on the right page. Good job. You guys are all calling the same thing. Because of course the key is they want all of us doing the same thing. So what I found Roy is that it was, I asked him, I said, how much work is this? He goes, Patty, it's really easy. Once you get used to using SurveyMonkey. So again, here's another tool you guys could use which is at it. I mean, we're going to be able to utilize Marcom, which is we have a guy that can put this stuff together and make it look really fancy. But here's a way in a smaller country that you can just use SurveyMonkey, very inexpensive, just like Zoom. You keep things under 30 minutes in Zoom. I do a lot of meetings in Zoom because if I can keep it under 30 minutes, which some people love, don't be it too long like this, like we've had this one. And that way that pro, that's free. All you guys can use Zoom. And then you can play video on Zoom, have people ask, ask do questions. And then in smaller countries with no budget, um, then you can do it. So I really thought this was super clever. And I don't know why I went to, you know, I didn't even think about it until I, I this year he brought this forward to us referees that work in his conference and it's awesome. So that's, that's the one thing I missed with you guys. I apologize. Yeah, that, that's perfect also to know if, uh, when, you, when you do this survey and you see that this, um, the, the level of answers are different, you know that you have to have some, this topic has to be dealt in, in, in a meeting to be more uh, talked about uh, to the, the referees if they have yeah. not uh, the, the main opinion. If it's not 90% and 10%, but it's 60-40 uh, or something, and that, then you know that there's a problem and you have there's to- There's a problem, yes. Yeah, you have to concentrate on this uh, situation. Yeah, and one of the things that we really have in America is we have a real big problem with ball handling. And because some parts of the country like Texas wants, they want everything called. I mean, if I'm not calling every little baby bobble that's happening, they hate me. But if I'm in Minnesota, they don't want anything called. Mm -hmm. So uh, the problem at a national level, we have to all be the same. And so it's very, very tricky. So oftentimes on some of these surveys, you have 50-50 on ball handling. And he said, then he has to say to the group, listen, we want all you guys to loosen up a little bit. So he goes, let's let some of these go. And I would have called that one and that one. And you're right. It's so... It's been the best thing that ever happened in that conference. Like even for me, I rep in that conference when I, in the olden days. And I'm telling you, I'd be repping with you, Roy, if you were from Indiana. You would call everything on Friday night and I wouldn't call anything because I do international on Saturday night and the teams would be so confused. They'd be like, oh my God, what's wrong with Patty or what's wrong with Roy? Yeah. So now we get everybody and I call. And by the way, when I come back to the US, I got to call a little bit more, not much, but a little bit. And then, then Roy has to call a little bit less. So you're right. I mean, that's probably the most important thing in a big country like ours. Yeah, that's a great tool. This is really a great tool. Thanks for sharing. All right, you guys. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. Thank Roy, you the very best. Much. Yep. Have a great evening, all of you.